And so convenes the first meeting of the Elite Prospects 2022 draft year. We're going to be ranking 32 prospects uh, from a whole host of different regions. And I suppose the conversation starts with Shane Wright, which brings us to Lauren Kelly. Why don't you take the floor? I think this is a no-brainer. Um, I don't think anybody else has made that strong of a case of taking the first overall kind of spot from Wright. I think, you know, as much as there are questions about um, whether he has that kind of elite upside that we typically see from first overall picks, at least recently, um, his defensive game is really strong. He hasn't, you know, maybe been tearing up the OHL that we might have expected him, but, you know, he's also been not playing hockey for the last year and a half. Um, so considering that, I think, you know, what what he's been doing right now in the OHL, even though he hasn't been maybe dominating as some would have expected him to, uh, he's, you know, very consistent. He's got um, great, uh, great effort at both ends of the ice. Um, the details of his game, uh, they're just, they're so impressive. He's finding those open areas in the offensive zone. He's, you know, finding teammates. He's willing to include his teammates on the rush. Um, I just, I, I don't think this, there is much debate as to why he should be our uh, number eight prospect right now. And who would be in contention for that first overall spot if it were to open up? Like, is it, is it as simple as Joaquin Camel, um, you know, maybe Logan Cooley, uh, not at this moment, but at some point, maybe, I don't know. Is it just like, does he have that strong a lock on that position? I don't think so. Uh, he's clearly the uncontested, uncontested number one overall pick for us right now. But like Lauren said, his play hasn't been as great as you might expect from a number one, number one overall pick. And while he does some things at an elite level, like he connects play, he's always positioned well, he, he distributes well. I think Camel does a bit of the same thing and plays with more confidence. He's more assertive. Uh, I don't think he has quite the same skill level, but Wright hasn't really shown it. So... I think it will be up for debate uh, at some point in the year, maybe if uh, Wright's play doesn't improve. And there's also uh, Savoy. <laughs> Savoy. And uh, I think Mitch uh, likes a lot. Well, it yeah, depends yeah. on the I week. Think... Like if it was yeah. last week, he hates him. If it's this week, he's a fan again. Uh, Mitch, what's what's the newest update on on Savoy? Like, is he in the the doghouse or? He's really turned a corner in the last few weeks. I mean, it's reflected in the production, but again, I, I guess the production is a little bit misleading because while he is the leading score in the WHL, he is not particularly close to the leading even strength score. Uh, he's getting a lot of points in the power play, a lot of kind of secondary assists, but. In general, we've seen a lot more aggression from him with the puck, trying to make plays. He's not simply just defaulting to his teammates. And I mean, and with that, you get a very diverse like player in terms of skill. Uh, the skating, particularly the stride, has really improved. But we're also talking about a player who could be one of the best shooters mechanically in the draft. He can shoot it off the pass, too. He's an exceptional stick handler, passer. It's just a matter of putting him in position where he's going to be more of a a play driver rather than just a guy who's going to link plays together. So I suppose this opens up the debate for number two overall, really, right? Like we've got Kamel, we've got Savoy. Uh, is anyone else part of that conversation? And Lassie, do you want to, you know, maybe throw your name in the hat with some uh, some Kamel commentary? I think he's a he's a solid bet at number two, but. I haven't obviously seen the, not as much as someone like David has seen the others like Savoy. But, I mean, Kemal doesn't really have the whole package almost. He's got above average tools in pretty much every category. He's very smart. His shot is really good. He's, an, he's a pretty good skater overall, above average, like... Maybe like 5.5 on our scale or 6. And he's also, I would probably give him the same for handling. So it's just that I haven't seen dynamic playmaking from him. That's really the only big concern that I have. But it's it, it just might be that the circumstances with the team are that he's basically the best option on the ice every time so but that's really the only knock that you can have on his game that he's not that dynamic as a playmaker or 
I know that David doesn't think that he's that dynamic overall, but I do see quite a bit of that in him in other ways. But and he's a very good two-way player. Also, he's improved on that regard very much over the past, let's say, two years. So I wouldn't be <laughs> mad if we had him at two, but he could be also at three or four, but not really. I don't think he should be lower than that. One of my questions is, does too much of the game flow through his hands, right? Like, does he rely mm. too much on his puck skills to create? Um, that's something that I've noticed, at least through Lego tape and, and to a lesser degree through the Holinka. Um, David, do you have any thoughts on that? I know you've seen a ton of, of Kemal. Yeah, I really like him. It took me a while to really appreciate his game. I had a lot of doubts at first, but he has pretty much everything. Everything uh, I see describe. It's just that it's the same thing with Riot. He's not really a creator for me, so... He's not the one man. He can do it at times, but he's not creating big advantages for his team. He's really a connector. So he's, he's all about finding open ice and he receives passes there. He moves it quickly. He builds scoring chances. He's really smart about the game. Um, it's just that, yeah, I don't think he's all that dynamic. So in terms of speed, his, both, both his skating and handling skills are above average. But in terms of really creating with those consistently, I haven't seen that. So for me, he's going to... His scoring is going to depend on his teammates at the NHL level. But in terms of hockey sense and in terms of having above average skills and projecting very easily to the NHL, he, um, he makes a very good uh, uh, number two overall pick for me. That's where I, I have him. And the production also. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's a big yeah the production is very nice. <laughs> uh, do you have any, anybody to throw into the, the ring for, for second overall? Yeah, I've got a couple names there. Simon Nemich and uh, and uh, David Yurasek. I think we could. I think both those guys could be in the conversation. For me, they're both top five guys. Um, we've been debating them like crazy on the Slack for a while now. Um, I love, I love Nemich. I, I I see a lot of growth coming from him. I see a lot of growth just throughout the season. Um, I think his floor is probably as high as anyone not named Shane Wright in the draft. Is that he just looks like he's going to be a easy bet to be a number four if things don't break right. Um, and I think that he's got the mobility. I think he's got the the calmness and the poise to his game at the pro level at 17 already. Um, even on his mistakes, you can see that like, they're not glaring. They're just, he's playing against 30 year olds that are coming flying down the wing. And sometimes he'll make a misstep on it. But um, the offensive creativity isn't as high as a player like Urasek, um, who I think that uh, is a lot of fun. He's, he's more that unbridled enthusiasm that you like to see from a young player, even, you know, playing top pro hockey. Um, so I think both those guys, you know, top five guys and, and could be right in the mixer for that number two spot. Yeah, I, I would be pro Eurocheck of the two in that spot just because of the the ceiling. I mean, once you're at second overall, right, you got to take swings and yeah. that would kind of dictate Eurocheck ahead of, of Nemec. Um, Merrick, why don't you chime in since they're, they're both from your region? Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, uh, this is a big year for Slovak hockey, you know, uh, the last time a Slovak hockey uh, or a Slovak player was drafted in the first round was, uh, I think, in 2013 with uh, with Miro Dano and uh, uh, both uh, Nemec and uh, and uh, Iricek are really good players. Uh, probably like uh, like Kem said, uh, Nemec is smart, poised, and calm under pressure. He's an all-around uh, blue liner and uh, he excels and. Uh, at uh, both ends of the ice, and uh, his skating is really good. Uh, I mean, I uh, still haven't seen any high-end skills in his game, uh, but the way he controls the blue line and uh, the way he's quarterbacking, uh, quarterbacking the power play is just amazing. But uh, on the other hand, uh, David Jiricek is uh, a really, exci- really exciting case for uh, the Czech hockey. Uh, you know, uh, we haven't had uh, such defensemen in a long time, and, uh, you know, uh, he's a big mobile offensive minded defenseman, very physical player. I mean, I really like his aggressive style of game. Uh, he has a great slap shot, uh, which is kind of uh, like <laughs> it's really accurate. I mean, it's really hard slap shot from the blue line. Uh, it also like uh, amazed me like uh, when he's uh, rushing uh, deep in the, in the offensive zone, uh, but there's one thing I would like to mention. I don't know if you guys know, but uh, Iricek had some uh, issues with his be- behavior uh, 
uh, he was suspended two times uh, during the last season. Uh, but it seems it seems good right now. But uh, we should probably consider, you know, taking this one in place. So, sorry, what were the suspensions for? I feel like that's uh, important. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think some kind of a uh, illegal check in the head or neck or something like that. Uh, you know, um, I think he's like a really confident player. Uh, it seems to me like he's really confident, and uh, you know, sometimes he just uh, behaves really weird on the ice and also on the bench. Uh, and during the play of last year, uh, he took a hit uh, to opponent's head and he was suspended for two games, I think. Uh, but everything seems normal right now. And I, I really hope he, he will keep it like that. Uh, he also had a chance to play at Karyala, you know, like a few days ago when he was really good. He was also named a player of of the game against Russia. I just watched that game against Russia just what two days ago or something like that. That was that was an awesome game for him. That was at the yeah, Kaharla. Yeah. That's a that's a high level event too, right? So that was impressive to see him step up and play so well there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I probably think it's only a matter of uh his, his confidence, you know, uh to play at this level at uh you know he's still only 17 years old. So yeah and we talked a lot about it his offense but I think um, he won't be, be a shutdown defender, a year check, but his defense is a pretty strong point for me. It's it's inconsistent right now, but his rush defense, he has he postures aggressively, he has four-way mobility, so he's very agile. He denies space super well. Uh, in zone, he has strong gap, he's aware, he's very engaged. He feels like he cares about that facet of the game too. So yes, he has offense, but for me, I project him more as a almost shutdown defender with puck moving ability. Uh, sometimes he tends to shoot at shin pads and he relies a lot on shot on the offense and he misses some activations that he could be making. I think he's even stronger defensively as a projection than offensively for me. So if you can't, if you combine our two evaluations, he's a very strong package. <laughs> he's so aggressive uh, yeah. transitionally, like so. uh, to the point where, you know, it, it, it is like, it does mess him up sometimes, but um, you know, the, the mobility, the mobility that he has, he's able to, you know, recover a lot of the, a lot of the errors, a lot of the time. Like, I think like on the blue line, I, I saw some really good manipulation. Like in one play, he broke, uh, he broke the high defender's ankles and then shot a shot, um, you know, took a nice shot in the shot lane. Um, I think his shot in general is like all down force right now. Um, lacks some, you know, some mechanics there, but um, yeah, he's super, super impressive. Like, um, I, th- I think I think he's better than Nemec right now, just in terms of upside. But um, that's kind of where I stand with them. Well, Asi, you yeah. you do uh, you cover Europe, so how do you feel about Kemal, Nemets, and uh, and and Juracek? I mean, I haven't had the chance to see Juracek enough to have that strong of an opinion, but I did like Nemec quite a bit, but. I think I would still maybe have Kemel ahead of him. But it's just that I didn't see that much offense from Nemec in the games that I saw. But I did like his transition play and his defense quite a bit. So he's, he's a pretty safe pick in the top five. But I would still maybe lean Kemel. Based on upside. So do we go Kamel, Juracek, Nemitz with the next three? Which yeah, I would go Savoy again. And Savoy and goes yeah. too. Or does Savoy become a part of that conversation? Yeah. He should be. Uh, he definitely should be there. He, so, if, yeah, he should be he's around five. That he's yeah. five at least. Like, like, so we can either stick him at the end of there, or like I'm not comfortable putting him over Kemel just because of just because of the reviews that we've got on him. Um, I can see him, I can see him at three to go between them. Really. It comes down to like, I think both your check and damage They're they're pretty much slam dunk middle pairing guys in the NHL with the potential to become more. And with Savoy, I think, you know, he's definitely going to be an NHL player like them. He's definitely a middle six guy. The question is, is he going to become a dynamic enough skater? Is he going to become manipulative enough to become that true top line forward? And I think the odds of him getting there right now 
are probably a little bit lower than say your check becoming a number two. I agree with that. We have a pretty defined top five then. Should be right, Camel, yeah. Yuri check, Nemec, and Savoy. And then My Slavkovsky, because I, I feel like Slavkovsky has a really strong case at six. I have him way lower. Same. Well, yeah. Fight I can me. make an argument. <laughs> the, the one thing I really did like about Slavkovsky is I was surprised at his speed. But also, he um, when he shoots his one timer, he does it down low, and he does seem to fool a lot of goalies with that. Like a lot of times, guys want to go top shelf, and he doesn't always do that. Yeah, I mostly I like, like his playmaking, like the one touch, two touch passing, the off the puck reads. Um, you know, like he's really strong as a playmaker. Yeah. Also, like uh, he can really control the puck at high speed. Uh, you know, he usually uh, does toe drags. Uh, in every single that game at high speed. And uh, he's like really dominating uh, in the junior league in Finland. Uh, and he's really strong also in Liga uh, at the pro level. And with the size he has, it's just amazing. I mean, the hands, the, the size, I mean, the frame, it's insane. But he's still just learning how to deploy oh, yeah. that huge frame, right? Like there's yeah. so much yeah. room for growth. Oh, yeah. That's the, that's, what, that's the thing. That's what I look at too, is that like he's going to take or he hopefully will take some massive strides in the next three, four seasons, right. To, to really bring that whole package together. That's what you're hoping for. And that's what you get when you're, when you're kind of assessing these young guys that are so large and they have such slick hands, you know, he plays with better pace than a kid like geeky, who we could have the same conversation about who still needs to figure out how to use his body properly. If he has it in him. Um, I think Slavkovsky has that, has that element to his game that I think he could really start utilizing that space that he can create for himself and then the hands to go along with it. He's really interesting. I know some people talk about him as a center. I've never seen him play the middle of the ice. It'd no, be great no. if he was, but but he looks like a winger to me the way he plays the game too. So, um, you with know, you now we're getting one. into the yeah, now we're like getting into the situation where it's like is it, you know, are we looking we're not looking to draft for players here to to fit positional needs, so I don't see a reason to bump Logan Cooley ahead of him or anything like that. I saw a hilarious shift he had like he he was rushing up the far boards and this player was trying was was on his back check and he just one armed him down on the ground and just kept going with this frame. But um, yeah, I have a, I have a lot of issues with his like forward stride and the skating. Um, I think it's, I think it's more I, like, I don't, I think he can improve, but like there's, there's just so many uh, mechanical inefficiencies. Like he heel kicks really hard stride links inconsistent. you know, he hops in his crossover and his upper body falls backwards um, like regardless, like, I think he can leverage his size. Like you guys are saying, uh, in the future to overcome that and use his brain and his hands and everything. Uh, but it's a big concern. I actually have uh, Maddie, a Chuck too, um, in this yeah. range. And Lassie only and has Slavkovsky at eight too. So this is early according yeah. to, to Lassie's work as well. Yeah. So, I think six might be a bit time for me. So because... Maddie Chuck then? I think this is year off territory. Yeah, I got year off, off I, spot I could, on my board. I'd have time to hear that out. Dylan, right, floor just, is yours. Uh, well, when he plays in those three minutes, he gets in the KHL every game. Uh, <laughs> if he's lucky. He, he, <laughs> if he, he practices good. well. He's not, just, <laughs> he's not just watching the game, being a good character guy. Uh, he's, a, he's just a really smart player. Uh, there's no real weakness that I've seen with him. Uh, there's been, uh, I've seen issues that were like, uh, decision making when he's under pressure and I mean his skating is for the most part all great he does just have kind of a hunched over stance um, which is like the main limiting factor to his skating but he's just super good at finding pockets skating into those holding up play uh, in the MHL he went down there for like however many games and just completely destroyed them because he was clearly the smartest and best player in the league right away but even like AHL uh playing you know maybe even if he shouldn't be all the way up there uh he's playing well for a player of his age the physical maturity uh it's something that he had to advantage last year as well playing in the khl um it's all just working well for him like it's like hard to get a full read on him because again just playing so little each game means you're kind of watching a different player at times uh you just kind of have to see what they want him to be doing in that game and how well he's doing that. Like sometimes he just goes out there four checks hard, 
gets the puck and then doesn't touch it again for the rest of the shift. And I mean, when he does that, he does that well. But when he's really getting those chances to move up the ice, he has skill. Uh, he has speed. It's not breakaway speed, but he can use the speed. He can use his hands at pace. Uh, it's just really honing down that uh, play under under pressure when he doesn't have that clear option. Sometimes he struggles with that, but uh, like offensive zone, he can hold the puck up along the boards. He can use the size and the skill at the same time. Just give himself uh, time to work, look for a lane to open, and then attack that lane. Cam, do you want to chime in? I, I know you've got all the time in the world for uh, for Yurov. Yeah, I mean, Dylan Dylan hit a lot of the nails there. Is that I just he's a pro. Like the kid's a pro already. Um, he should be getting more minutes. Obviously, it's 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 hopefully not detrimental to him long term with getting getting so few minutes right now. Way too good for the junior circuit. You know, obviously they don't have a B team, so it's just a tough spot. But um, I love just the little the little details of his game. He's a big body kid who's he's not actually not that big, but he plays a heavier game. Um, always on the right side of the puck. I think he's got good hands. I think we saw at the Holinka where he could show um, the the offense as well too, right? To come up and, and to play a little better. Um, or it was U18 is one of the two events there. Um, I just think that he's got middle six just plastered all over him um, that I think he could be like a heavy kind of like a baseline Tanner Pearson sort of thing. And then you're looking up, up, up from there. Um, so a guy that you can reasonably play in all situations on your third line, if that's the floor. And then, you know, I don't know if he has dynamic, you know, top line upside, maybe um, we'll see how he develops over the next few years, but probably that really, really safe middle six guy, number two, um, I like, I like a lot of his game. You know, I think he's got a good shot. I think he's got good vision. He gets hard on on the forechecking, takes good routes. His skating, his mechanics are clean. Um, yeah, I think he's just all around very good at things. What would the I, case uh, be for, for Matty Chuck? Uh, Mitch, uh, Mitch, I know you've been banging that drum. This is probably a little too early for Matej Chuck. Uh, I think there are a couple forwards who are better. But the, the case for Matej Chuck is there, is there is not a player who is more involved in the play than him. Uh sometimes bad but overwhelmingly good like this is a guy who wants the puck on a stick he demands it through his positioning through his work rate through his skating his energy everything he's up in every single rush he's activating off the point non-stop and you see him do it in very projectable sort of ways you know give and goes deception we've seen him increase uh, or improve his ability to kind of slow the play down with the puck recently um and of course, just a very refined rush defender who can run people over, put them into the boards and still manage to recover and get stops around the net front. Um, yeah. And, and on top of that, you're also getting a very capable offensive zone playmaker. Uh, it comes down to how much more deception can he add? How much more patience can he add? But he constantly looks for teammates in the, in the slot. I've tracked four Matejchak games this season uh, and Three of them are the three best games I've tracked from defensemen. Uh, and I think there's a, Min a Mintyukov game in there as well. But, like, I have a sample of over 70 games now. And that's every player on every team. <laughs> and, yeah, just a lights-out player, honestly. Uh, he's one of those guys where there are, there are legitimate flaws, but you just see a player who he does so much and he impacts the game in so many different ways that it's hard to imagine him not improving just because he already has the default, like getting game reps in because there isn't a game where he doesn't get the puck a lot because he's, he just, everything flows through him. It's, <laughs> it's spectacular. And it's one of the, it's probably the most exciting thing in the CHL right now. Do we put Yurov down and then maybe is it still too early for, for Matichuk after, after Yurov at six? No. no, no. Yeah. I think it's fun. <laughs> so why don't we do that then go Yurov then Matichuk. Um, boys is unreal. Like, and then Slavkovsky. Uh, that or or we can or we can start talking Cooley Nazar. Yeah, I think Cooley and Nazar start getting in the conversation soon. I agree, and in yeah. in that order too. Oh, yeah. you bastard! Sorry. You absolutely. <laughs> no, but traitor. it's true. It's <laughs> listen. It's he's not, not a though. traitor. He's telling the man speaks the truth, and and we hate him for that. Um, <laughs> I just think Nazar has so much more creativity to his game. Like he, he just, he sees plays and patterns that just uh, like a coolie can't visualize. Right. And the execution isn't quite there yet, but it will be. And... Well, you don't know. See, that's the whole thing. The argument for me would be sometimes that turns into more. And sometimes that turns into confusion at the NHL level where coolies a little more 
the find and what he does. And then he's a better 200 foot guy too. He's more There's projectable. A lot of confusion. And he is more UHL, projectable. SHL level for Nazar. Sorry. There's already a lot of confusion at the USHL level for Nazar right now, I'd say. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> He's awesome, but very chaotic, right? This is, this is, yes. we kind of had this debate, David and I, last night with uh, Philip Massar. So like Massar is very much this player who, unless he has an advantage, he's not going to really kind of uh, try to, you know, get the puck to the inside, take a puck from the perimeter to the middle. Um, and Nazar is get to the middle at all costs. And I don't care if it means that I'm going to turn it over. I don't care if it means that I'm going to worsen right. the pl- the ensuing play. Um, I really like, honestly, like I've really come to appreciate Nazar's improved playmaking this season. Uh, last season, he was looking for his teammates, you know, but it's only after he beat someone, which is a problem. Like his first instinct, okay, beat a guy, and then I can make the next play. He has to diversify that mindset a little bit. On top of that, you're also getting a lot of physicality. It's the same thing with Massar. Like Massar, well, he's not like a great inside player. Like he's physical, he knows how to trap feet. Nazar is even better at that. Nazar will like run people over. Uh, he'll get them on his back. He'll use his bottom hand uh, to keep them there. Um, and, he, and he's great at sealing off um, uh, back pressure or just anything in general. He's good at just keeping it on his back. He can really overwhelm players. So with Nazar, it's all projection, right? Like you're hoping, okay, good stick handler. He has some awareness of his teammates. He can shoot it and find space off puck, and he's very physical. How can we turn this sort of like natural athleticism and skill into sort of a refined NHL game? Well, here, here's a good example that I would use, not positionally, but that type of player. Like Jake Voracek's never lived up to his potential because he does all of those things and he's never refined it. And that's why the Flyers got rid of him. And he's still always going to score points, but he's never going to really reach his potential. I, I had some doubts about his defensive game at first, and then as our dad is, but I think it's more of a strength now with more viewings. Yeah. It's exactly what like Mitch said. It's really, um, if you start scouting more, if you can, if he looks for, if he actually thinks about passing more, could he turn into a much more effective player than Cooley? Probably, because he has the tools of our skating, handling, physical skills, even passing skills to an extent. Do you think Cooley has better acceleration though? Because I feel like he has better no, acceleration. I, I, and I think, think Nazar so? has better tools across the board than, than okay. Cooley, but Cooley is much smarter. It, it's the same. Cooley is the same type of player as Wright and Kimmel, just a lesser version. It's all about connecting plays, being in the right spot at the right time, uh, taking passes, moving them quickly, repositioning inside space. And he's Ace. smart about the defensive game too. His decision making is really great. He doesn't force passes, he hits the best play quickly. He has some playmaking skills. He's aware. He has deception, anticipate rotations. So he's really smart, but I don't know about his, his overall tools. But he's still a top 10 pick because we have to put someone in there. <laughs> yeah. I, I really <laughs> like how Cooley kind of employs the skating kind of yeah. to um, to Russ's point. Like, I, I think, you know, I, I think the skating is probably pretty comparable between between him and Nazar. It's probably a, a wash and it's close enough. But um, I do think, like, Cooley's just kind of smarter in how he goes about it. Like he, he doesn't necessarily have to force like an inside cut and, and try to get a shot off or, or a pass to the slot. Like he's patient. He'll wheel around the zone. He'll take the back of the net if he needs to. Um, he's strong. He's, he's still really strong, even though he doesn't necessarily, you know, finish his hits as yeah. you know, Nazar does on everybody. Um, but I do think like, like you said, Cooley just kind of has has a little more poise and a little more restraint on kind of when and when not to pull the trigger. Um, and, and he's a good enough skater that, uh, like, when there's an opening to the middle or, or when that defender crosses over the wrong way, he can expose them still. Um, but at the same time, he kind of has the restraint to, you know, cut back, escape, um, you know, find a high guy, things like that, where, where Nazar is – a little more kind of north south like if it doesn't happen on this rush it's not going to happen at all the one thing i'll give so, Nazar over cooley is he has a knack for finding loose pucks all the time in the offensive zone he pounces on it i think his off puck timing too is better than cooley's it's probably some yes, of the his timing is i've is seen like he phenomenal he, he navigates like and i think cooley like don't get me wrong cooley does a good job of it like cooley finds little spaces and stuff like that like he's not bad at it but Nazar is so good at like supporting the puck close. And then he's got kind of the, the small area skills too, um, that when he gets it, it with, you know, limited time and space, he can kind of find the next guy, or at least you kind of see where he's 
uh, you see the thought process behind it, even if like we talked about the execution isn't um, necessarily there. So like that's always been, and it's something that, you know, JD kind of raised me in when he watched him in Pittsburgh and it's something I've been watching. Like you watch him off the puck kind of in isolation. Like he's, he's got uh, a high activity level and he's working to always find um, where he can be to be a threat uh, in a place that's feasible to get him the puck. Also one key thing about Pittsburgh and Cooley made a point of telling me this, he was thinking too much about the draft. And if you look at the way he's played like his last, I don't know, 10 games or more, he's definitely forgotten about the draft and played a lot better. He, he, he didn't play his best in Pittsburgh. He didn't. One of the biggest differences between them, right, is that they both have those off puck instincts, but Cooley uses them more to be in the middle of the action and Nazar uses them more to be at the end of the action. Like Nazar uses that to be able to get into pockets of space to fire off a shot. Cooley uses them to be more of a give and go playmaker. Yeah, I agree. That's a, that's a really good point. Yeah. that's Like Nazar is like, if a guy's driving wide, it's like, you know, strong side, top of the circles, I'm going to get it, curl and drag wrist on that. Whereas, like you said, I think Cooley is kind of a, you know, middleman for a next pass. This is really just like a pick em kind of thing, to be honest. It is they, a pick em. It is. Yeah. Well, it seems like the group That's leans Cooley. Too. So why don't we do Cooley nine, Nazar 10? I'm good. No, no arguments. Okay. Did we talk about Meshar? Is, is that how you pronounce his name? Meshar? No. Eric, that's that's all you. Yeah, we yeah. call Meshar. Meshar is the right runner. <laughs> Thank region. you. I checked with someone too <laughs> a little while ago. Make sure. Or Lambert. Yeah, I think you have to start I, I'd still have Lambert. Lambert ahead of, of Meshar. The one thing I noticed about Lambert, because I look back at my old notes, right? Because we always want to look back and see what we thought of him then. And then we look at what he's doing now. And one thing I noticed is like the speed's still there. The, want, the willingness to score is still there. But what I did notice is, and this is, and it took me a little while to notice this until he hit the NHL for Kako, is Lambert does need a certain amount of space. If he doesn't have that space, he can't operate very well, and he's not going to score very much. And that is that is the one drawback that he hasn't gotten over. Like, Kako hasn't even gotten over it yet at the NHL level. So, will Lambert? Maybe, because he's, he's faster than Kako. But that's well, one Lambert thing that can create space with his hands, with his, his speed. He's like, having trouble doing it though right now, like where right. he is. I watched a lot, and but you're right. Theoretically, <laughs> he should be able to. And well, Lassie, this is uh, this is yeah, your time to shine. I don't know. Well, I don't know what to think about it. <laughs> that's a ringing so endorsement. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, All right, Lambert in the second. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I get there. I mean, the the tools are obviously really good. Skating and handling are both elite, and he's an elite transition player. Some of the best data that data that I've tracked. He's better than Kemen. He's better than Slavkovsky in that area, but he's just not creating enough chances of the rush or of the cycle. He doesn't drive to the middle enough, and he's pretty bad defensively. And I, I'm not sure that he can play, that he's a center long term, and they've already moved him to the wing this season. And I think that's probably where he's the most useful, and he doesn't have to play defense down low. But he's been slightly better in the last few weeks that I've seen, so maybe he can take take things and go in the right direction, but I'm not that confident in his projection right now, but it's it's just betting on the tools. Right now. Nancy, what do you think about Does... his motor? It seems like he has a really good motor, though. Yeah, I mean... Sometimes, sometimes not. Uh, I'm not sure if it's that consistent because um, maybe it's been slightly better in the most recent games and he scored a nice goal today and all that, but I don't know. It's just when you 
when we don't have anyone else that anyone likes enough, that's where we go and slot him, I guess. How, how different is done. perception if he's not getting PDO'd into oblivion right now? It that's a question I yeah. ask. Because yeah, like that's a fair point. the percentages are not in his favor. Yeah, but even if he's showing though no either. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like what he's doing. He's underwhelming. He's been underwhelming almost every viewing I've had, almost every shift I've watched of him. I love watching him. I've had some good like, viewings. Yeah. Like, no, I've it, had some good viewings. I, not I like top five or top ten quality, but I've had some good viewings. Whereas is the it underwhelming is just getting because he's not scoring? Left and right. Is that what you mean? Because he's not. No, no, it's head? it's purely I value decision making so highly, and it's just he does not make great decisions. But you know, we've talked about it too in the Slack. Like I've I've debated being like maybe this guy should be in like the mid twenties, but his feet and his hands are so excellent. Yeah, that you're just yeah, like you can't he should be able to. Far. He should be able to, to to yeah put those two together and make himself at least an NHL player out of it, right? Like that. If he if he can't get the brain to do it, then he's just got to use his feet to go get in there and smash and and forecheck and hustle onto pucks, and then his hands to just bury a little bit, right? Like it's you hope that he could be able to to put them together to come up with something better. But at this point, like the decision making and inconsistent effort, like Lassie was saying, is that it's been inconsistent too, which you don't want to see. Um, it's, it's not ideal, but again, like, I still think he's got the tools that he should be in this class in the top 15. Well, what would be the argument for Meshar? Like, uh, wait, wait, I want to say something about Lambert. I I, I think his tools are more of a curse for him. Like he's the typical, I've always been skilled and more skilled than everyone else at lower levels. And now I find myself in professional league and things I used to do don't work anymore. They don't create the same advantages. The other players are and not as fast or as skilled, but like he doesn't know how to create because he never really had to learn to create because his tools did it for him. He was so much better at skating, so much better at handling, so much more elusive than everyone else. And now he's really at a crossroads. He, he has to develop his games in other ways or he's going to stay the same forever and never really learn to check and have trouble even making the NHL. So he's very, very fascinating case study. And I, I love watching him, but... Uh, I don't think he's that great of a prospect, unfortunately, because of the way he developed, probably. And that's why I like Mesh or sorry, more than <laughs> you got it, than Lambert, because he doesn't have the same kind of tools, but they're pretty close in terms of handling and skating, uh, maybe a, a grade below. And he uses them in more productive ways. So uh, he, he takes some low percentage decisions sometimes, like he, he tends to fire on that from. Uh, the wall and he, he makes a lot of whole plays but he's better at protecting the puck he has a better feel for pressure his rush patterns are uh, just as fun to watch and just as elusive and he can create offenses on injuries and he uses teammates more and it's really his off box skills and this is the biggest separator between them, them two like uh, Meshar is small he's slight he can't resist pressure he can't resist he can't stay inside. Like he can't go to net and try and battle. He doesn't get the inside. <laughs> yeah, it's not possible for him right now. It's just yeah. not in his game. And the way he adapts, he that he just weaves in and out of the slot. So he's going to dash in front of the net as the puck comes, and then he's going to move out, sneak down defenders, come back after circling top, top of the zone, circling the periphery. And he's really good at timing himself. It's always a guessing game. Sometimes he misses, but. More often than not, he's at the right spot at the right time. And I think it shows a high hockey sense. So he has to adapt his games. He has to uh, create more to delays and uh, uh, by holding the puck more in the offensive zone. But even if he's small and he lacks strength, he can still protect the puck. So he can still, if he keeps his feet moving and the defender doesn't manage to make him stop, he can play true contact and extend one arm, use his knee to protect the puck, turn the other way. He's very elusive still. So he has some potential to create inside but it's a lot of projection still i like him more mm -hmm. than lambert because of the off ball game i think he's smarter too merrick what do, you, what do you think of uh mashar and then we'll we'll let you chime in on that one too daniel he's a really good skater uh you, you can see it every in every single game he's on the ice uh he's just different in in uh slovak league with his skating and uh his playmaking abilities is another strong aspect of his yeah. game but I think David said everything about about him. So, uh, yeah, I also really like him. But, uh, you know, the strength of him is uh, a question mark. You know, he's really he's really weak in one-on-one uh, -on -one battles and stuff like that. So, we will see. But, you know, he, he can get stronger, that's for sure. And Daniel, what were you going to say? 
Well, like I think he overcomplicates a lot of plays sometimes, and I don't know, like, <laughs> yeah, that's like true. on on the spectrum, like if it's I'm trying to be creative or I'm just making bad decisions. Like I, I don't know what it is really, but he he has execution, so it, it doesn't really matter too much in his league at at times. I think in my recent viewings, like I've seen like almost the exact opposite in terms of like, like. Uh, how he handles pressure. Like he's slipping checks. He's working past, past people. He's attacking into not into pressure, but he's like, he's, he's dealing with it fine. Uh, but like, just to go back to David's point about his off puck game, like, I think that's like, like it's such an underrated part of his game and it's just insanely good. Like he, he'll, he'll move into like soft areas of coverage, then he'll support a pass then he'll move out and, and execute another play in space. Like I, I, I think he's just so impressive. Um, I think there, I think he has a good base. I think he can, uh, you know, I think the handling skills can leverage, he can leverage the handling skills even more at other levels. I don't think he'll, he's going to have issues in small ice game. Um, he's pretty young. Right. So he even takes good routes on the forecheck too. Like he's, he's yeah. not someone who can play in traffic all that well with possession, but he takes really great routes to forecheck. And then, you know, he's not getting in there and laying the body, but he's just being quick and he's going for quick stick lifts and he's disrupting plays that can help cause a turnover when he gets support. Um, as you guys know, I've, I've talked about a lot of it. I've, I'm writing an article about him. And so I've, I've watched a ton of his games and, and, you know, he, I thought Mitch, you nailed it on the head. There is that unless he has an advantage, he won't take it to the middle. Um, but he often finds himself with an advantage and then he will drive into the middle of the ice. And like, I have tons of clips of him serpentining in and out with possession um, and kind of creating lanes and, and looking for those folds to open up and just a really smart player. I think if we're talking IQ, like it's head and shoulders between him and Lambert, but uh, we're with him is that you're banking that strength will come, that he's not going to be one of these kids that just can't get above 170 or something like that, because that'll, that'll, it'll be a plague for him when he, when he moves up into the NHL is I think his game will have to continually adapt and adjust. And, you know, he's showing that he's able to do that right now in the pros. Um, but we're talking two or three level jumps coming up here and that'll be a little more challenging at his size. But I think at this range, like this is where I've got him. So I think this is, is for me personally, is a great spot. I think the big improvement that he's going to have to make is adding the delay game, like above strength, above everything else, because he can, you can avoid being weak in the NHL by having a delay game by knowing when to cut back, by knowing when to find the trailer. And on top of that, when you cut back and you stop along the boards or whatever, the defenseman goes back. And if you time it, the back pressure also overshoots you or they just don't come up. And then you have the opportunity to cut inside. And so for me, that's that's going to be the, the key ingredient for his development. Can he add that through this season or is that going to be a next year and the years on thing? But yeah, he's he's a perfectly fine player here. Like the tools are tantalizing and on top of that, he has enough around it you can see him carving out a number of different roles, I guess, in the NHL. And he serpentines. I like that verb. Yeah. Serpentines. <laughs> so why don't we put Mas- uh, Mashar down? And do we put Lambert down at 12, or is that still an open question? Do we start talking about, like, Seamus Casey, Connor Geeky? Seamus Casey. Yeah. 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 I think he's better um, than those guys as far as tools. Who? <laughs> Lambert. Lambert has better tools than oh. those other guys. I would have. Uh, I mean, I Geeky's know. got great hands. Mitch just got excellent he does hands. have great Mitch hands. For the, but the Casey fight. <laughs> Casey's got <laughs> excellent tools. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, yeah, but it's not like Lambert is a, a step above them skating and otherwise. But yeah, I get it. If you if you're only going to point out his failures, sure, put him put him at 15. But you know, you have to hope that some of this stuff gets worked out. I don't think he should fall past like 13. Lambert, Lambert, but we can yeah. have KC ahead of him just in terms of hmm, <laughs> this is the hard debate because KC has his issues too. Yeah, uh, we can yeah. talk a long, for a long time about him. Uh, I, I, when I first watch him, like you're going to see a Let's Watch video on our YouTube channel about this. Uh, he had a great, great, great game, and I thought he was uh, clear above average defender and he was creating offensively and he was doing pretty much everything on the ice. And the only downside I had for him was his size, but now I've seen a bit more of the cracks. Uh, (laughs) He's not as consistent. Sometimes he's disengaged from the game. He doesn't really read ahead to deploy and he gets beat wide off the rush. Um, His defensive game, sometimes he doesn't scan. Sometimes he makes great interceptions. So it's really, I don't usually use that word, but in terms of KC, it's really appropriate. He's, inconsistent so he has some great performances some are where you write a report with a lot of question marks uh but in terms of 
to be able to create and manipulate and make some highly creative plays and things that other players in this draft don't do at all because it's not a draft or, or there's a ton of creators. They're mostly just connectors. So like Cooley, Camel, and right. Um, KZ tries stuff all the time and he has the handling skills. He, he's probably one of the better handlers in the draft and he has that handling skills to pull him off. So I think this will continue at higher levels. He's going to be a great NCAA defenseman. He's going to create a lot. The issue is that his size, his defensive game, his skating is above average probably, but not significantly above average. So there are some question mark about his ability to translate his game to the NHL, and he's going to adapt some parts of it too if he wants to get there and be effective. So for me, it's well, around his he, range. And I think a lot of people have a lot of say about him too. <laughs> when, when he has the puck, though, he's good at, at drawing some penalties too. He does get dragged down because yeah. he can control the puck at times, and that's, that's something I noticed. That's a positive too. He's a special well, handler yeah. for a defenseman. Like yeah. he, re he really is. It's not just like the mechanics of his hands. Uh, it's not just like his feel for the puck. It's how he. It's how he enters. You know, any situation with the puck. Like so on retrievals, a lot of guys just get it, continue forward. He like does some weird spinny, pull the puck around the guy, stick thing in all one motion, bring it around the net, set a teammate up for a breakout. Um, it's just for me the biggest thing is he seems to have issues knowing what to do next. You see him pass a lot to teammates who are more covered than himself. He beats a guy, gets into space, and then isn't sure exactly how to use it. But he's just naturally deceptive. Like his posture, his handling, the way that he moves, the constant changes of pace. He's going to be a guy who, as the pace increases, I don't think he's going to get forechecked into oblivion or anything. And in many ways, that might even benefit his game just because he's not going to have a huge sheet of ice between him and the F2 after he beats the first guy. He's going to have to make decisions faster and it might be, you know, a more positive outcome in his game. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think this is, this is his place. This is exactly where I would have him. Yeah. I think he belongs here. I also think he's got like some pretty good offensive tools. Like he's not the guy, who's, he's not a guy who's going to be, uh, you know, joining the rush every play necessarily, but um, he's got some good off pucking instincts to kind of be, uh, a good supportive high guy. I've seen him kind of uh, manipulate shot blockers from the point. Like he's got a good, pretty quick wrister that he manages to get through traffic. Um, so I think he's got a, like, we talked about the shiftiness with his hands. And I think his, I, I do think his skating is above average and we see him use it uh, to beat guys. So I, I'm a big, big Seamus Casey fan. I think he'll, he'll iron it out and, I think this could it, it, it could be a good investment and a good project for someone to take him in, in this range. Yeah, and, and you usually see uh, an engagement defensively and the experiment, the, the tendency to be overly creative. Those things usually improve as players age and quite naturally. So I'm not too concerned about him. I liked how proactive he was actually defending and sustained pressure. But I don't have really a ton of viewings, right? But yeah, tons of manipulation from him. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Daniel. I think kind of like what David said, like some of the rush, some of the rush pattern stuff, like he's not he's not super great. He doesn't really have the backward skating ability to seal off guys early or it'll get burned. Um it's kind of why I liked when he played with Chesley. They kind of balance each other out pretty nicely in that respect. So um but he'll figure it out. He's a good enough skater. Um, and just like the offense and transition game is just too good to ignore. Oh, uh, Brad Lambert. I yeah, think we got to put Lambert down. Yeah, I think so. Geeky. <laughs> he's, he's got perfect. a lot of those other things but he can't skate. not with much enthusiasm he, apparently <laughs> no, he, we would be resigned to geeky at that spot um any anyone else like you know i i could really go leroy jenkins and throw uh gleb tribe trikozov um yeah like he, he rules <laughs> he is forward david yurichek like he's trying things every shift uh dylan Wax poetic about our boy. Uh, so yeah, I was going to bring up both him and Maroshenko here in this range. Uh, I mean, Trickers, I was just been improving so much uh, just through this year and from last year. He's taken just a huge jump forward. Uh, a lot of his game is kind of chaotic, 
uh, but he's kind of learned how to control that chaos throughout the year. Uh, he got sent down recently to the MHL there, and uh, kind of like Hero, he was just one of the best players in the league straight away. Um, but in the VHL, he's just using his uh, size. He's really learned how to use that to his advantage. He's forechecking really aggressively. He's super successful there. He'll just you know quickly nab the puck off you, turn around, and just some some games he'll just volume pass. Uh, just hope for the best in the slot. Other games he does you know get more control with it. Uh, it's just been uh, his pass accuracy too is like yeah, that's uh, what, it's that a little bit shaky from game to game. Like you don't know what yeah, you're going to get. <laughs> He loves trying to hurt his teammates with every single pass, which at times I don't blame him with how how much I don't want to give him the puck back ever. Um, but yeah, those that's been one of his biggest things is just control the passes. He has the right ideas. He's making the right reads. He scans super quickly. It's just the execution, just working on that. And it has improved throughout the year. Uh, he's definitely, uh, in the last couple of games I saw, he hasn't been rushing his passes, especially on the breakouts. Um, so he has been, you know, thinking a bit more about where he actually is going to be passing the puck and how hard to pass the puck and just things like that, uh, rather than just full force every single time. Uh, the past at the start of the year, his teammates were definitely really struggling to control those. And that's what, like his time on ice was like, you know, he wasn't breaking 10 minutes very often in the VHL. And that was probably the main limiting factor. Uh, now he went back and played like 15 minutes and was you know one of the best players on the team he's been better than Roshenchenko this year by far uh he's just more of he's more trick is off is more upside like uh you know trying to go for the full home run whereas Roshenchenko is more safe uh he'll probably be better than trick is off like at the next level for you know however many years but uh, trick is off is going to be more exponential growth and then with time I think he'll be the better player it's just you know you're then taking the risks of what if he just never does get better. Uh, but with Maroshenchenko, I think we've all seen him and been incredibly disappointed. I I think I have <sighs> like one good viewing of him, and it was when one he was okay playing Switzerland. Viewing. No, he was playing Switzerland at Linka, so I kind of threw it away because that Switzerland team was just god awful. Uh, but he just hasn't been able to get space for himself like anywhere. Uh, like, it, became really apparent at Holinka that he just couldn't do anything because he couldn't break away from anybody in the VHL. It was once again, you can see it's an issue. Uh, he played he turns at the back to the play so often. It's like uh, he peels away from passing opportunities and I just, uh, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> it's like he doesn't want the puck half the time. <laughs> it's, just, it's truly bizarre. Open, but he doesn't, he it. doesn't make himself available to be passed to, uh, but I saw him at the Four Nations, and he had like, I think he had two goals in the two games I watched, and both of them were just because the defense completely forgot to like look at him, and he just sat in the slot with four Swedish players chasing the puck in the corner, and then the puck fell to him, and he scored there. But it just hasn't been impressive at all. Like if you take the last name off his jersey, it's like, is this a top ten player? No, is it a top twenty player? Maybe. I think his tools are still there. I still think he's a well above average skater. I know David has pointed out uh, like his high stance, and I do agree with that. That's really limit his agility. Um, Heel kick he, too. He's, yeah, he has a weird stride. Uh, I, I think he's very like innate, explosive. Uh, maybe he has more power in his legs than others because yeah. So sometimes he gets into good positions in, in, in his skating. So I agree that it's probably an above average grade. But he has some issues there too. And yes, Dylan, you wanted to something he just hasn't performed well this year <laughs> and so i just that's where i really struggle with him because last year in the mhl he did look like what he was like touted to be but then it's you know dy minus one mhl tape i don't really think it's that like uh conclusive i kind of i often just throw that kind of stuff away because it really varies year to year with players in that league but this year it just hasn't he hasn't looked like a good player in the games that he plays and he still gets, you know, top six chances in the VHL. He played one game in the MHL and I think he took like eight shots and that was it. And I I don't know what to do with him. I still think he belongs like top 15 just because of what he does have, the strength, the skating. Uh, he has a good shot. He tries to be a good passer. Uh, it's 
it just rarely comes off of him and just he hasn't been able to get space and that's kind of the main concern because he's just not doing anything i just don't know how you place him ahead of trikozov like i I just don't know how it just goes back to that whole like for me it's like upside versus like safety versus upside i the last couple viewings i have with trikozov have been like they've wanted me to put him like top 10 and i haven't seen that at all with Miroshenko, so i can get on board with it uh i know that some others here don't like Miroshenko very much either and damn you've seen both right yeah i've seen both i haven't i haven't seen a ton of glab i i have uh dylan put him onto me a little while ago and i I think I only have two viewings of him right now, but I do like what I see. Like, I don't like him this high personally. Um, I think at this point, he's still more of like a twenties guy. Um, Moroshnichenko though, it's, you know, it's like Lambert. It's, it's been, it's been underwhelming. It's been disappointing. We were waiting to see him pop this year. Um, I don't even know if we'll get to a kid like Solomonson, another one who we just like expected the tools to take him to, to another level. And it just hasn't happened yet. But like Dylan said, we're talking about upside versus safety. Um, at, it, at this part of the draft, what are we valuing? Well, you know, are we, are we hoping that he puts it all together and then maybe when he's 19, 20, 21, that those skills are being leveraged into the proper positions or is, you know, is Gleb going to be a kid that just like continues to trend upwards with his style of game and just becomes that really effective middle six guy. Um, so it, it's, it's kind of a wash. I have Miroshnichenko in this range. I think I have him 16 or something like that still. Um, but it is, it's kind of anchored to his previous play the things that we saw in the past um so it yeah it's this is this is kind of a, this is the fun range now like now now we can get wild too like there's there's a whole host of names like i think geeky should be unless we've already put him down he should definitely be in this conversation because he's another player who frustrates a lot and has kind of disappointed this year but also i think has a decent floor just the way that he reads plays defensively his stick um his, obviously the big body and plays on the middle that he's another guy that i think the, the base on him is going to be in you know a third or fourth line center but he also has first line upside where i'm not sure a kid like glove does i i went back and watched some um, mirosh nichenko stay from his uh, his draft uh, draft minus one so last year and i wasn't impressed like I don't see anything in this game. I don't think he belongs in the first round. I don't think he's a main prospect. He's just a hammer. So he hammers people and he hammers the puck. That's what he does. And he doesn't find space uh, all that well. His awareness of space is really bad. He gets surprised by opponents constantly. He just puck watches all the time. He, get, he's, he puts himself in the slot and waits for the puck. And then he goes to the board if there's a retrieval chance and just hammers the other guy. Sometimes he wins the puck. Sometimes he loses it. Like... Is, I guess he has some scoring instinct because he goes to the right areas, but I have serious doubts about his hockey sense and his tools are good, but not that good. So I would have him like 10, 20 spots lower. I haven't heard anything in this discussion that makes me think Marashnichenko should be in the top 20 or top 30. It is literally just, we was we were told he was good last year effect. and now we are simply waiting for him to do the things that we were told he did. We're blasting him too for like his, his creativity and his stuff, but at, at the VHL level, like he's producing at one of the best rates ever for a, for a U19 in that league. That's not an easy league to score in. Um, so he is, he's not, I haven't, I haven't focused in on him a ton this year, but you know, internationally, <laughs> I think his game did pop as a D minus one. I think that's pretty evident. Um, the, the V games I have watched, I have been a little underpressed, but I also haven't checked in on some of the games where he put up a bunch of points or any points, really, I don't think. So, um, yeah, it's I, I, I would tend to agree. I have been disappointed enough that I would I would be comfortable having him in, in the 20s or even outside of round one, potentially. Um, I think we are kind of maybe blinding ourselves to what could be just on what we've seen so far this year versus what we, some of the things we've seen in the past. But again, that's what we're looking for. We want upward trajectory. We don't want a guy who's plateauing or going the wrong way. The VHL uh, scoring I'm, argument is like interesting, but we also have to remember like guys who scored similarly to him uh, or who have scored similarly to him, uh, Shibrikov, uh, Svechkov. Okay. That's interesting. But Alexei Lepanov, Dmitry Katalevsky, like there's, it's, it's super, it's super mixed. Right. And that's, that's part of, you know, you don't generally see a lot of players playing VHL at this age. Uh, but also, you know, it, it, it's Russian development is very kind of all over the place there. Yeah, I just I don't know. I haven't seen him uh, except for the under 18s. Uh, I, I, there's just nothing here. that like there's 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 no positive words here so far. 
Well, who would challenge um, our submission of, of Tricozov? If not Miroshchenko, then maybe Geeky? Yeah, I think Geeky should be definitely yeah. right right in there. I, I would have Geeky ahead of ahead of Tricozov. Yeah, but I have uh, Mintyukov over over Geeky, but they're both mm-hmm. fine in this territory. Ooh. Rachel's fuming somewhere. Smoke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hard <laughs> you, man. <laughs> I haven't have seen it. enough of him to comment, but that, that's fun. That's a fun take. He's a fun player anyways. I mean, he's been, he's been unreal the past like two weekends. Uh, like un- unbelievable. Like he might be the best playmaking defenseman in this draft class. I've seen stuff from him in the last two weeks that I haven't seen from any defenseman. Like he's doing high end stuff, manipulating, baiting sticks, making defender move their, making defenders move their feet, like high level passing stuff. He's one of the best stick handlers in the draft class from the position, obviously not Casey level, but he's close. And his one-on-one defense is, is awesome. Like he's super aggressive. It's just a matter of structure. And you watch him play in Saginaw and you realize some of this roaming is by design. This is what they want him to do. Uh, you like, I, I had a little bit of a tweet thread about it, but he's basically playing the bumper at five on five and it's by design. That's what they're asking him to do. And so we can, we can say like, Oh, this, this is terrible or blah, 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 but he's just doing what he's told that he still has to clean up a lot of things. Don't get me wrong. Like the off puck defense is an issue. Uh, (laughs) The timing on some of his activations need a lot of work, but this is a guy who's very dynamic. He's pretty, his tools are pretty much above average across the board. And again, the playmaking seems to me that it could grow into becoming one of the standout tools of anyone in this draft class. I'm not as high on Minchukov as Mitch and David are. And I'm also not as low as Rachel is. I think I'm somewhere in between. Like, dare you. Like, <laughs> uh, like, I agree with everything Mitch says. Like, what he's been doing, especially leading up to, like, today, like, his game last night was incredible to watch. But um, I'm just, I have a lot more concerns with, you know, what happens when he, you know, moves up or moves to another team that's not Saginaw and he's asked to play a completely different game than what he's being allowed to do now in Saginaw. And the roaming in the defensive zone, the chasing loose pucks down to the other end of the ice to pressure goalies to give the puck away as a defenseman is just crazy to me. Um, and I think as far as, you know, he looks like the best OHL defenseman, you know, compared to someone like Ty Nelson, who they're kind of just completely different players. So I think right now I would have been Chukov above Nelson, but I, I don't know if I would have him this high, but yeah, I don't know. There's a compelling case to be had for sure. There's there's nothing wrong with conceding some ground on Mendyukov. Like it's okay to it's okay, like I'm okay having him at like 22 or something. Um, and I like the projection is an extreme one, right? <laughs> like we're projecting based on a very small sample size. But the other side of that argument is that it's basically the same for all of the other OHLers. Because other than Owen Beck, no one has really actually been consistent and creating things regularly. Um, but yeah, Mendyukov is, is a particularly special case, just given the, uh, let's say, chaotic nature of his game, even once considering the circumstances. So let's go geeky here, I guess. Um, is, like, I mean, geeky does have his flaws. His, his skating, obviously, Ooh. that's an issue. Uh, he is, mm-hmm. he is, he seems to be very aware of, of his skating limitations. Like I, I saw him in Red Deer and he was, and he was working on ankle mobility um, pregame. And so that's a positive sign because there are lots of players who have skating issues and they think they need to squat more. So, <laughs> so, so that's, that's a good start, but yeah, he's, he's got, I wouldn't say that he's an exceptional handler because he is very inside edges dependent. Like he's trying to juke guys out and then ride his inside edges to angle around them. You don't see that ever in the NHL. It's not going to work. Uh, but he does have a very good feel for the puck, very good touch. Like you see him, he can spin the puck off the boards, bring it to the inside in one smooth motion. He can whack that thing out of the air and then and then one time it before it hits the ground. Uh, and he's very creative. Like he wants to be he wants to be a skilled player. Um, at this stage, it's very rare to at this stage of development, it's very rare to find players at his size who have that sort of identity still. Like at this point, you won't be able to coach that out of him. He wants to be a play driver. He wants to have the puck on his stick. He wants to be creative. Um, but there's just a lot of a lot of concerns as well with like the off puck defense. He's great, great defensive stick. It's just timing around the slot. Like he has six goals this season, 
And it's hard to say that he's earned more because he consistently overskates pockets of space. He's consistently late to them. A very interesting uh, <laughs> uh, conundrum with that. But big playmaking center. Obviously, he's going to improve skating. He knows what he's doing. He's, you know, he's going to do what his brother did most likely. He already has that blueprint laid out for him. It's just a matter of can he make this kind of skilled game work when he doesn't seem to have the awareness of, of body positioning, of, of pressure, of, of physicality that, you know, you generally need to make it work as sort of um, a below average, slow paced playmaker in the NHL. Can I say something about Geeky too? Like, uh, Please. like, He's like, I was going to say, absolutely not. (laughs) Yeah. He's, he's annoying. Cause like, like he'll just like, like he'll do like, he'll go in the corner, grab the puck. And then it's like, and then like, he's either going to do what Mitch said is take it to the net in one motion, or he's going to send like an uncontrolled backhand hope pass into the slot or something like that. And then like, like he doesn't know how to handle space, even though he's like huge and he should be able to like, it's just like, I don't know. It's just kind of, he's like a weird makeup of a player. I feel like he should, he should be leveraging like some of his tools way better and um, doesn't drive the middle lane off puck at all. Like um, in my viewings, at least Um, I had a, I had like a lot of viewings of him um, from the hub. Right. And I was super excited. And then, you know, you go to this, this year's viewings and it's like, Oh, um, a lot of the stuff I thought that was going to happen with him just didn't, he would be better if he were smaller, I think. His size is more of a problem than and, and something that works for him, I think. Yeah, definitely. Because he wants, you know, when you're when you're bigger at that age, it's, it's you know, you generally fall behind in the skating department. Um mm. and that's 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 kind of what has happened here. Uh, but you know, there there are like he's one of these players who like as Daniel alluded to, like last year I really saw it. I really saw the upside there. Like he was better at, you know, getting pressure on his back. He had a little bit more of like kind of a hard skill retrieval focus as he was playing this sort of a deeper role on Winnipeg uh, with Mikey Milne and Zach Benson. And they had a really good dynamic. And, you know, Milne has taken off this year. Benson has really taken off this year, although he was he's been recently moved uh, with uh, Savoy and, and uh, McLennan. And Geeky has largely just been you know, there, (laughs) he, he hasn't been quite as dynamic as I saw last year and he's gotten worse through the, throughout the season. Like there could be a number of different reasons for that. So like, I don't want to go off speculating, but my viewings have been consistently downtrending. Well, we could drop him at 14. Like I don't hear opposition to that. It's definitely a safe one just because like NHL teams do big stuff, right? Like they're going to pick up. Ottawa's drafting him third overall. Like, come on. Yeah. We know and, this. It, and, you know, I've already heard some talk of like people comparing him to like, oh, you know, Cody Glass or like even Ryan Johansson. And like there's in terms of their draft years, there's huge differences between like the skill level, the execution. And it's even noticeable in the point totals like Geeky scoring more than, say, uh, Johansson did. But Johansson was like second on his team in points and he had a big playoff run. And Geeky is uh, merely one of many very high scoring players on that Winnipeg Ice team. They have a few of those. Yes. <laughs> so geeky fourteen. Um, can we do Trikozov at fifteen with with two Hardy endorsements? Sure. Uh, and then Ogren. Um, who else? Uh, BMB. I think we I need to it. talk about Owen Beck here if we're going to bring up BNB. I think it's too early for BNB. I don't think we should bring up B. <laughs> yeah. I was just going off Rachel's more, list. I watched two more games this morning and the skating's bleak, man. Like I said, he would be he would be the he would be the worst skater we've ever ranked inside of uh, top 45 maybe top 50. Um It's brutal. Yeah. Right, and he's a, he's a smart worse than player Pastor but he's Jaws. just I think it might be worse. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Way mechanically, worse. it's not worse not than Pastor. He has he's worse. good motor, high pace, but he's mechanically Oof. he is he is worse. There's no wow. ankle flexion. He bends significantly. Uh, he drops his torso to the ice. His feet yeah. kick. Uh, he strides behind him. He's a weird Wild player though, player. who like is very 
uh, in tune with his body. And like, so you'll see him like come along the boards and like, he'll set something up to deceive a guy and then cut back and the cutback is terrible. Right. But it's so mm. well timed that he sends this guy flying down the ice. Uh, and so like, there is reason to believe in him. He's just one of those players that I would like to like, personally, I would like to be a little bit more cool on him at first and hope that it improves just because if it doesn't, and we had him at 16th in the end of November, he's going to be 84th or something in a few months. So <laughs> right, it's, it's a tricky one. Yeah. I feel like if we we're going to keep him in this range, we would need to hear Rachel's case for it because I don't think right now I, I would have him lower than a couple of other players in the OHL. She doesn't have any reports on BMB. She is a, like the, I think one oh, or one. two, but they were they were early on in the season. Two. Yeah, he, he was looking good early on. Like he he's yeah. kind of he's kind of faded a, a little bit. Uh, Wait, how is his skating grade at six then? I I didn't put the grades in for him, so she did it. I gave him a four, and I was like, I probably should have given him a three and a half, but like just because he is so aware, and just you know, it's a tough one. He's he's a he's a really tough player to figure out. I don't think uh, for just from my viewings, I don't think he's a, a first round talent. I had one that projected him that looked like more of like a B level player. And then one that I was like, this guy shouldn't even be drafted. It was so poor. Like the skating is awful. And then he wasn't engaged. And basically what I've seen is that like, he's pretty good at making defenders miss through transition in the neutral zone to gain. And then on the power play on that, on that half side, he's, he's pretty, he's pretty dynamic with the puck from a standstill and he can make quick passes into the slot high danger passes. But other than that, like I was woefully under impressed with him in, in the viewings I had. Um, I think a kid like Noah Ostland should be, you know, miles ahead of him or Ogren. Uh, to me, he's, he's let's talk about him next, next. Jimmy, uh, that's, uh, that's your walk up music. Yeah. Hi everyone. <laughs> nice of you to join us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I've been listening actively here, so uh, it's nice to hear about every player here. Uh, good insights. Well, for the Swedes, I think Ogren uh, or Ögren, as we say in Sweden, uh, should be the first one up here. He, I think he's the most solid one uh, of, of these guys. I'm really not a huge fan of any Swede this year. Uh, there are some holes in every player, but uh, Ergen, uh, he does everything well. Uh, he can play up and down the lineup. Uh, you can have it as a third guy maybe in the first line, and he do a good job. He's effective in the fourth line or third line. Uh, he, he's a great skater, uh, and he controls the puck well in pace. Uh, he, um, I think he reads the game pretty well. A uh, good passer, a uh, good stick handler. One thing I really lack is maybe, you know, that high-end creativity. Uh, I don't see him like a driver on a power play or a driver on a good offensive line. So uh, this is a solid, what you, you can say, like a middle six forward, I think. And as the talk has been of some of these guys here, I think this would be the right fit for him, you know, in the middle of the first round. I watched a bit of him. Yeah. Um, Austin and um, I think uh, yeah, that's the same. Austin is a bit smarter than Agren, but the tools are better for Agren. So he's a better skater, I think, uh, maybe a better handler. He can make some quick play, but I really like Austin's supporting game. So he's another player, just like we've been talking about Cooley and others like this, who is in the right place at the right time. He cares about the defensive game too. He's always trying. Not not some some of his reads that he makes are not great all the time but uh even when you play at the shl level from what i've seen he had the right roots he had angling skills like he looks like a i'm also a pro already it's just that his skill level isn't all that high and my grin is a bit better at everything technical if i can say it like this i haven't watched him a lot though i watched a little bit of all grin and like like I thought his shot was like amazing. Like his top arm completely unlocked, bottom hand pushing a ton of down force, uh, synced like lower body weight transfer. Um, you know, he's planted in the bump. He was planted in the bumper for most of my viewings, uh, shifting to like the net front, taking a ton of punishments. Uh, I think his stride is pretty mechanically sound other than his posture. He's kind of tilted at the hips, like long extensions, powerful push-offs, like 
um like uh i think he's like i think i agree like he's not he's not super super dynamic at all but the tools are kind of nice do we draw yeah I was... in at uh 16 then yeah i think i was uh quite a big fan and i think there's a good chance it becomes like a good maybe a good second line winger so i i definitely endorse this that works for me let's just put oslin right next then too uh, i like him better i think he's got a little higher upside i know that the swedish national team the junior national team also prefer oslin to ogren as well that they've usually pulled him to the u20 events and well ogren stays behind but uh that's pretty compelling i think he's got a I think he's still got a, I, I think he's got a little bit more upside, but I'm fine like putting him back to back like this. Even like I have them fairly fairly close on my board too. Actually, it's been the other way around. Ergen has been playing with the U20 team uh, when Oskland has been in, uh, or Oskland. Oskland has been playing with the U18 team. But I agree with all what you're saying about Oskland. I really like him. I want him to get picked high, and I want him to be. A great player because he he works so hard. His legs is always moving. He's helping his defense. He's always right there for supporting for a pass. He he makes everyone around him better. I think he's the motor in this year garden line with Lekkermack and and Ergen that's yeah. has been so successful. And he, he is kind of like the role that Sebastian Aho had with uh, Pulyarvi and Line uh, a couple of years ago. Uslan has been that motor for, for these guys, but not getting the shine. But the thing I, that knocks him down a bit for me is just the producing. You know, his shot isn't good. His skating is a bit iffy, but, you know, he moves his leg and he's kind of explosive. So it's, it's not an issue for him. Uh, I would like to see him finishing off plays and not, you know, playing with his legs at uh, top pace all the time. Uh, I would like him to slow down the game and uh, be a bit more creative. I think he, he would be a better player. But Oslan is a player I really like to watch. So I, I don't have any issue with having him uh, around here in the middle of the first round either. Can we just do them back to back? Yeah, let's do Ögren. Did I get that right, Jimmy? Yeah, I think Ögren is a safer pick. Oh, I meant the pronunciation, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good, too. <laughs> that was good. And Usland. Yeah. Um, Close enough. I'll take that. Call that a win. Um, what about Isaac Howard? Yeah, yeah I think uh, Isaac Howard's getting the retime. time. Yeah. Uh, David... <laughs> David shaking his head already. I'm going to you on this. Mitch, don't you hate Howard too? I mean, you hate every prospect, but <laughs> yeah, I, I I only have three viewings of him this season, but I had him as an easy do not draft. Yeah, wasn't do not draft. Yeah, do not draft for me. You maniac. Damn. Do not well, draft. The, the thing, the, the thing is, okay, okay. Hear me out. Instead of being like, oh, you know, well, <laughs> you know, none of y'all have game reports, so shut up. Anyway, I have game the, reports. The, 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 <laughs> The issue with the issue with Howard that I've seen, because this is coming from me, a guy who loved him last year. Like I thought this was a top 10, if not top five player last season. The issue is that he simply serves as a guy to connect plays. He's a passer who constantly misses all of his options. He doesn't have the same shooting game that he used to. He doesn't know how to set his shots up. He's the classic case of guy who wants to go wide and then curl it all the way around the defender. But he, for some reason, doesn't turn his outside leg outward so he can actually continue that motion. So he's just shooting straight at the defender's body over and over and over again. Yeah, it's been really painful to watch him play, to play this season. Like, I didn't see any notable awareness, any notable skill beyond skating. Um yeah, really, really tough one, especially given how dynamic he was at the start of his NTD, NTDP career last season. So Mitch is a maybe on Howard. He's so inefficient. <laughs> <laughs> He's so ridiculously inefficient. The jury is like, still out for Mitch. He has passing mm-hmm. skills, but it doesn't like very fast lanes, doesn't see them. That's he, skating he, too. Like he, he can have that fucking happen. fly. He can, yeah, he yeah can, there, he can there's two players that have to have a high gap between their skills and their ability to read the game. There's Sullivanson and there's Howard for me. 
Like, yeah. I mean, hockey sense is a four, maybe for me, for Howard. A generous. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for Solomon, I, mean, I was he, like negative four for me. <laughs> on, Howard well, bothers me every time things, I see him. A couple things I could say is he, um, he does have great deeks. It's not like he's going to score on all of them, but it does help open things up. And, and his, with his wrist shot, he can not only pick the car, far corner, but he's able to pick the far side because of his long reach. And that's something where, you know, that's that's a valuable tool. You don't see a lot of guys who can do that, at least I don't. The thing on Howard is, like, I, I – so I, I read Mitch's reports, and I kind of – I saw there are games where he's on and games where he's off, right? Like, there's, there's a ton of stupid habits where he just drives wide. He takes these, like, shitty short side bad angle shots. There's, there's the problem with him trying to do it himself, like changing up the angle like 13 times before he finally fires it into the defender's shin pads. Like, I get that. There are some bad habits there. But to JD's point, speed, the speed is hard to ignore. Like, off, off the zone entry, off like his, his zone entries, I think he's pretty dynamic in how he attacks the middle, how he creates pockets for himself on the outside. Um, I also think he's starting to learn that, like, he doesn't always have to come to the middle and change up the angle and take a bad shot every time. Like he'll attack the middle and then he'll delegate kind of to the outside. Um, I've seen him do it a few times where he's pretty deceptive with his, with his handling ability. Um, and he'll kind of bait defenders and move their sticks and, and get, get the puck back outside. I don't think he's like you said, he doesn't have a lot of poise. He's not super smart. He's not a guy who's kind of going to circle back and reevaluate his options. He's, um, he's, he's very much a North South player, but I think like the upside with him in terms of his, his skating ability and like his handling and his capacity for, for deception, it's really promising. And I've seen some really, really strong performances out of him. Um, that I don't think he's, he's a do not draft. I'd be fine, you know, knocking him maybe to the second late first, but I think he's just got, he's got so much skill and he's, he's demonstrated like, at least half a brain in some games where it's like, if you can correct that and you can kind of fix him and you can get him to get his head up and identify options better. It's like the sky's the sky's the limit with, with that guy in terms of raw skill, he's got stuff that he he's better than Nazar and Cooley yet. I think one other guy that I, that I really like is uh, that I kind of put in like this next, I, I talked to David about this kind of the next NTDP tier. If you, if you, want a little more intelligence uh, as cutter Gautier. I knew. Um, <laughs> I think like in terms of like, he, he obviously not as great of a skater, but he's got some good kind of East West ability, super smart um, in terms of like, it, he's the facilitator that Isaac Howard probably wishes he was um, just, just a very, very intelligent player. And I would be fine kind of putting them in, in this range in either order. I have McGrory higher than, than him. I think he's been coming on this season. I, I think, I think we're, I think we're watching him develop. I think, cause I saw him, I saw him last season live. So I'm this season live. I think he's got some good things going. I don't think he's a center. I think he's a left wing. And I think as a left wing, he could do a lot of those things. I think his skating's improved. He's already physically strong. Like I do think he's a guy that, you know, he's getting some points for a reason. He does have a great wrist shot. He's come under pressure, too. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I can't stand McCordy. That's like every time I watch McCordy, I just <laughs> – it's, it's I haven't been a painful fan this for me. I said just like, skating. skating. Just the skating's so bad, and it's like he thinks he's a good skater, but he's just I think a god all this, Like He can't cross his feet. Yeah. No, exactly. like, Daniel, you're, you're 100% right. It's like – he'll he'll enter the zone and it'll like he'll try to swivel his hips or do a fake you know like he'll he'll do a fake or he'll try to do a skating move and like there's no acceleration out of the move and the defender is still right where he was before the strength is impressive i think there's some good defensive awareness but for me it's just like i agree russ with your point about him being a winger but there's just not enough that I think will translate to the next level for me to put him in. Yeah, the and first strength won't matter in the NHL if you skate like that. It won't. You're going to exactly. get knocked off balance too easily. You're not going to have any mobility, any end tight quickness. 
Yeah. Um, uh, on Gauthier, I think this is too early for him. Like I have a bunch of OHLers even that I would take over him. But Gauthier is the rare player who like he can take 10 shots in a game and not a single one of them will be bad. And he'll have set up like five scoring chances. Like he's he's really, really good at, you know, making the right play at the right time. And he's added so much deception to his playmaking game since we saw him at the start of his NTDB career. So, yeah, very uh, like he's an artist I, I, on retrievals, too. Like he's, he's a perfectly fine candidate. Like, again, I still have a few more guys to go, but he's a perfectly fine candidate, like 20 and on. I mean, he is one of the best shots in the draft, right? And he is a goal scorer. Like that is, that comes at a premium now too. I mean, there's not a ton of goal scorers anymore that come out of drafts and go into the NHL. Should we talk about Uh, Nelson? I I still have, I have Uh, Pickering um, and Mintyukov over Nelson. Me too. Same. I would have Just way over too. Nelson. Can we put it down? <laughs> there we go, Rachel people. We did it. Be happy. <laughs> we still need to give Nelson a first. We still need to put Nelson in the first round, though. I think just to yeah. respect Rachel's Based work on, on this. the work. Yeah, I, I like him too. Yeah, I agree there. Tell well, me how he translates, though. Other than being Ryan Ellis, though, he's got to go the Ryan Ellis route to be to be a legit player. I think I want to like him. I want to like him a lot because he's a fun player. But at his size, with his skating, he's physically developed. I don't. I can't see putting him in the teens. We're talking Ty Nelson. No, yeah. I I think he's a twenty to thirty two player at best right now. Yeah. yeah. I would have Minchukov over him. Um, I would have. Uh, Owen Beck needs to be in this range somewhere uh, right now, but I think Minchugov before Beck, even though they, they play two completely different positions, but I don't know, Minchugov yeah, sometimes Pickering. plays like a forward forward, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the... What do you like about Beck? Sorry, Mitch. I think when it comes to like this whole group of OHL players, Beck is like the best forward right now, aside from right. Um, you know, he's the most well-rounded player, uh, he's consistently making positive things happen on the ice. His positioning is really strong at both ends of the ice. He reads plays well. He's a much stronger skater than uh, a lot of the other, a lot of his other peers. Whether it's um, someone like BMB or even um, someone like Hunter Hater, Danny Jilkin, um, he's really strong off the puck. He finds space for himself in the offensive zone, or he's anticipating plays and creating turnovers, picking off passes, stick checking. Um, opposing players he's got great vision down low Um, his production has really started to ramp up lately so I think that's one of the areas that was kind of up in up in question at the beginning of the season but the points are starting to come now which is good Um, he's also one of the best on face-offs in the entire OHL which is pretty impressive for a first-year player Um, and he's taken almost uh, he's taken over 300 draws so far this season so he's very consistent in that in that uh, department. Uh, And I just, I think, you know, we've seen a lot this season in the OHL where his draft eligible peers, a lot of them look lost on shifts or throughout entire games and they're very inconsistent. They look underdeveloped. Um, They're only showing flashes of what their potential could be. And I think Beck is the one player who doesn't look out of place in the OHL this season or uncertain on any shift. And I think he's the only player I can say right now confidently that is like that aside from Shane Wright. Yeah, and the only real major concern I have with his game is just the he, what he defaults to in transition. In transition, he wants to take the defender wide and get him and race into the net every single time. That doesn't work. He's a, he's a powerful dude, and he's got great body position. Like he'll really fight to get that leg in front of in front of the in front of the defenders, cut off their hands, get inside. For him, it's just a matter of learning like how to use his hands and how to use his feet to cut across the front of the defender, how to delay. And he shows all of those playmaking skills necessary to do that just down low and on the power play, as Lauren said. Um, and I think he was, I think he lost it last night, but he was on like an eight game point streak or something, which is yeah. like crazy for a kid who didn't play any hockey last year. Um, yeah, really, really exciting player to watch. Like every time he steps on the ice, you know what you're going to get. And what you're going to get is a lot at all cor- at all four corners, both ends, in front of the net in transition. So do we go with Beck? I still like Pickering and, and Minchukov more. Yeah, I would put Minchukov. <laughs> we, we could do Pickering then. Uh, I, I I have Minchukov over. Sorry, I've been yeah. phrasing wrong. I have Minchukov over Pickering. Uh, oh, in okay. the battle of the chaos, you default for the highest skill. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. It's getting Pickering close to is... Adam Ingram time too. 
Pickering goes nuclear like every game at some point, and he's like he just spams manipulations like <laughs> control paste at the top of the points, and like um, for such a big guy doing that, it's like crazy to see. Like he has some two touch ability too. Like uh, um, you know his transitional defending is kind of weird sometimes. He pinches at wrong times and um, passive at times too. But like I don't know like. Like, I think he's going to explode offensively, like, eventually here when, when he just figures it. To score. <laughs> yeah, and, like, he just, you know, like, he's, like, way on the other end of the spectrum of, like, manipulations, and he doesn't know, like, when to use them, really. Just manipulate, manipulate, manipulate. <laughs> like, uh, but, yeah, like, he's he's very, very fun. There's There's so much to his game. Like, I've watched him. He's the player I've seen the most this year, and I really – aren't i'm really not entirely sure like what to think about him he's he's very interesting because he does have this like exceptional awareness of back pressure sometimes and he can delay at the right times he cuts up the ice at the right times he tries to stick handle through people sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't you're never gonna watch him be like yeah he didn't try to make plays happen because he's always experimenting always figuring things out but a lot of the time it doesn't translate to the offensive end. And also a lot of the time it just results in passes straight up the middle to the other team for a scoring chance. So <laughs> there is, there is a lot of work to be done with Owen's game and you see swift current and they're very much uh, a very free flowing kind of open team. You know, all of their defensemen do the things that Pickering does like activate regularly, try to make plays, be creative off retrievals. Um, and so it's a bit of kind of a team wide experiment. And he's just the guy who's really kind of taken the reins. Um, very fun to watch. Highly recommend watching Swift Current Broncos hockey, which I haven't said in years. Can't believe yeah, that was. That, can't that believe sounds that's a like thing. <laughs> they don't score, though, and their goaltending is a bit of an issue, but <laughs> that's what it is when you blow everything up. But yeah, I would have Mijukov over him just because the higher skill level, also chaos. And then, uh, and then Pickering, 18 19, I think. Let's let's do that then. Okay. I think Minjukov is better defensively. <laughs> I know this is up for debate. Uh, Minjukov is definitely better on puck. Uh, yeah, Owen Pickering is way better off puck. <laughs> mm, maybe I haven't seen dude, a lot. Of dude, Minjukov spends entire shifts at the blue line in his own zone. I he is not him better him off puck than Owen Pickering. Too. I'm a big Minjukov fan. I have him 14th right now on my board. So. You don't have to convince me. All right. At 20. 20. <laughs> Isaac Howard. I would have Beck in this range. <laughs> Steam escaping range. Mitch's ears. <laughs> yeah. Um, Adam Ingram. Haven't seen him. Joey, Joey do you got my I, back I've on this him. one? I do have your back. I will say he rules. He's I, awesome. I, he's very good. Um, I don't know if I like him more than Howard or Gauthier. I don't know how you feel on that. Um, but just like another guy, super high activity rate, not a fantastic skater, um, but just like uh, super smart off puck habits, always is involved in the play, really active defensively. He's like kind of kind of everything you could want, honestly. He's a pretty complete outside of his skating constantly maybe an over -reli right maybe an over reliance on his hands uh, uh like off the rush that probably won't translate at the next level like he'll need to develop his skating to be a mm -hmm. successful player uh, like the the kind of way sometimes the way he creates offense isn't super sustainable um but i i watched it when you brought his name up and i i have been really impressed he's super like, deceptive really yeah, yeah. And and I think he's got a good like his shot's an asset too. Um I think he's got like a pretty good like nice curl and drag wrister uh that he that he kind of employs where wherever he needs to. So um I like him as a first rounder. I I I don't know if I'd put him ahead of Gauthier especially. Um I I do like Howard. It doesn't look like I'm gonna win the battle for Howard. But maybe next time I'd probably put him I probably have him as my uh as my forward after as my next forward after Gauthier. Could go Gauthier Ingram Howard then. Like not not at 2021 20, 22 but just 
as a group separate them that way. I don't think Howard belongs here. Like I'm very firm on this. I, I like Hudson more than I like Howard. Oh, That's Joey will like that. And <laughs> and no, but David hates Hudson. That's the thing. Oh, it's not. It's not a testament to how much he loves. I, I didn't understand the implications of that point. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's, I yeah. wouldn't like Howard. I thought I Mitch was the one that like, hated Hudson. Yeah. No, yeah. I like him. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. You, you two hate so I just many like prospects like, that it's it's hard I just to keep like track him at seventy or him. like sixty or something. Oh, yeah, that's oh. how you love him at seventy or sixty. Yes. Okay. But glad that was clarified. <laughs> Is that uh, Beck's spot now? Oh yeah. Well, Honestly, no, we, we put back. No, back at twenty. Let's put back down. Respect Rachel okay. and, and Lauren's work. Yeah. I respect the Beck aggressiveness. This this could be really fun. Back to back Owens spot now. <laughs> Whose spot? I keep asking this Nelson's. Oh God. <laughs> I think asking this for every. Cam, I think Cam. Uh, we're think fading Maroshnichenko <laughs> so hard, and I, I'm totally cool with it. I think Maroshnichenko has sucked shit this season, but we're fading him so hard. <laughs> now Nelson kind of reminds me of um, of Jack Rathbone in a way that he like just tries the same manipulation off the point every single time. And it just works at the level that he plays at. Um, but like funnel pucks inside like Rathbone. Like, yeah, like it's, but it's all like, it's all like fake shots, like over and over and over again. And if, if his opponents actually just like realize that he'd be like way less effective, but like he just does it and it works every single time. And, um, I think there's a lot of rust in his game when I watched him jettisoning a lot of pucks without scanning. Um, but you know, he's constantly manipulating with his eyes. Um, I think, uh, I think I worry about his projectability. Like, like Cam was saying, like he's physically developed and, um, you know, his shots, amazing downforce arms, unlocked one leg release. It's all synced together, but, uh, uh but I just defense. wonder, yeah, his defense is, it's one of the best uh, in the draft. Like he's super yeah. engaged. His rush defense is almost perfect. I don't know about the tracking. Maybe Matt Mitch will contradict me on this, but like his in zone defense, he's angling super well. He's engaging, engaging at the right time. He has risk mitigation down to his positioning is good. He's always activating, always moving. It's not super efficient. He has decision making issue on breakouts. He doesn't scan. He makes a lot of rush yeah. and bump plays, but. Yeah, like we said, every OHLer is like this right now, and he's more projectable than many of them just because of his defense. He is built. It's also a positive point for me because he's on a smaller side. Um, but he's, you can already tell that he's going to be able to, to play the role of the engager at the professional level because he gets under other players. He's, there's a lot to like, too. I don't know if it's... Oh. it's mm -hmm. We could have him a bit lower, but I think he belongs in that general range. My problem with his defense is just secondary, like, threat identification. I think that's from mm -hmm. lack of scanning. Like, he just misses... Sec like, the, like, a couple games I watched, it was, like, three, four goals against just straight up from not scanning back to back facing uh the, the the wrong way during the play not picking up a rebound like just uh, that's that's my biggest issue um, i haven't seen that so maybe that's something to add and what about like how many five foot eight defenders are good rush defenders in the nhl like it's that is going to be like you Sam need to be Gerard? You, you need to have exceptional Gerard. footwork right exceptional footwork i think to be a good rush defender at that size uh, five foot ten got right? He's, five foot eight matters. He's, he's listed at five foot ten, but it's definitely a lie. Like you, like yeah. yeah. If oh, you yeah, see it's five foot ten, it's like five foot six, five foot five. Unless, like, I tweeted that out when I saw half the time anyway. He looks yeah, five, when they when they put that out there that he's five ten, and then I tweeted it, and I immediately do not draft. Sending me, they're like, I was standing next do to him. Like, five either. eight is generous. Like he might be five seven on skates. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, okay, never mind. On skates on a platform. Yeah. Um. I'll tell you what about Marco Casper. About that's one small thing that we don't actually track, but he he's a great chirper. I like his chirping. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. You guys have everything else covered, but I like his. He chirping. seems like a good dude. Like he, like he seems like a great kid by all reports too. But I think we should talk about Marco Casper at this in this range too. Ahead of Goche. Yeah. 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 The floor yeah, I think yours. so. He is playing and producing well in the SHL right now, and he's just like. 
he flies. He's got pace. He gets in on the four check. He takes good routes. I don't think he has like standout skills that are just like, Hey, this guy's going to be a top six guy for certain, but another one who looks like he's going to be a very capable middle six guy. Um, uh, yeah, he he's, he's got quick hands in tight. I watched a game of his the other day where like he got it up and under the bar from down low after he caught the, you know, after he, he got in on the four check and disrupted the play and then turned it into a game tying goal late in the third. Um, he throws reverse hits. Like he's, he's just a little nasty out there too. And he's got some skill too. So I like Marco Casper. I think that he's legitimately in this zone. Um, I think he's a first rounder for sure, but uh, you know, like I've got him at 20. I think he's, he's definitely reasonable at this level. I think Cam said it right there. I think he's just that he is a competitive uh, smart four checker. He's strong for his age. Uh, good shot. Uh, saw the goal the other night too. Uh, one thing I like is, you know, he he gets a lot of opportunities on the power play too. And then he he really likes to to circle around and gain speed through the neutral zone and really, <laughs> and he's uh, not shy of uh, you know attacking the middle there and. Sometimes, you know, he, he, he can just go through a, a whole defense that way. And uh, so his skating is really good. Uh, he's smart with his skating, too. He, he, he attacks, you know, in the right situation when, when he has speed and when he has uh, those, uh, what, what, what can you say, those advantages. Uh, so he, he, he can also detect, you know, when a defense is, uh, probably not that fast, and he, he can take advantage of that too. So he's doing well in the SHL, and uh, I think he's uh, quite similar player to, to uh, Liam Ergen. And so uh, I think this 20 plus uh, range is, is good for him too. You know, he lacks, you know, that uh, <sighs> The offensive creativity, play driving that way, he's more of a like a power forward in uh, in that regard. So, uh, but I but I like him. I think that's you, it's a good range with him. I think. Do you like Laker Mackey more than him? Yeah, I well, they're so different players. Uh, yeah, I think Casper is a safer pick. Uh, yes. A lot higher percentage to become a player in the NHL. Lecker Mackey. Uh, the skating is... Mm, it's, it's just the puck skills there. You know? It's yeah. a great shot. Uh, precise yeah. shooting. I, I, have, I, I was, yeah. was live at a game when they had a hat-trick. He just, he just picked corners like, I don't know, like Cole Coffey yeah. used to do in, in the junior leagues. Just amazing shot in, in some areas he, there. And, doesn't he's get inside looper. though. Is he's my a looper. problem with like, with Lakaramaki. He just skates. Yeah. He skates on the perimeter around the zone and like does laps. Yeah, does laps. Um, some of the goals he, he scores are just. Yeah, sometimes he gets to the inside, but not by himself. He's he floats around and then he times times and then gets into the slot and you know shoots a one timer, but. When he drives the puck, he, he never, you know, attacks on the inside. He's trying to shoot from the outside, and that is hard to translate to a higher level, I guess. <laughs> uh, not being able to attack the middle. And so there's a lot of question marks with him. Casper uh, is a totally different player, uh, safer pick, uh, has higher chance to become a player. But if Leckermacki figures everything around uh, out and competes better he, he needs yeah. to, sometimes he just skates by yeah. the, uh, close yeah. to like a meter close to the defender on the four check so yeah uh, it's, it's yeah. really up and down with lecker Mackey, but you know what i, I like the skill so uh, he, he's a tough guy to to get my head around his pace is really uninspiring sometimes like just half skating mechanics lazy skating lazy form like um, limited support a lot of the times. Uh, I don't think his top speed is that impressive either. So I, I think skating is an issue there too. I like Odelius a lot more than Lucara Mackey too. Yeah. Odelius is, if you see where, where the hawk is heading now, you know, 
being able to defend your blue line, the neutral zone. I think Cordelius is it's a great player. To Moves have. the puck with pace, deception. Yeah, yeah, he's. Yeah, he, and he's a great skater, powerful skater uh, in all directions. Uh, just shut down the blue line every time, you know. So he's, he he competes defensively, strong in front of the net, in the corners, fast to the puck. Offensively, I don't think he's like a power play defenseman, but, you know, solid puck mover, you know, uh, plays to his strength. Uh, if you compare to Salomonson, who never plays to his strengths, uh, I think Cordelius is a smarter player. and uh, so, so I like him too in this 20-plus uh, late first round uh, range. Uh, he's been, he, he really impressed in the last uh, international tournament. I think I was lower on him in the beginning of the season, but he's, he's making strides. About his face, do you think he... Because I, I find it, it tends to slow down the game to turn back on transition and just a, a lot of players do this maybe on European ice more than in North America, but he does it a lot. So he's going to reel the puck to his partner and then to take his time. I think his game, he has offensive skills and yes, he's very tight in his rush defense, but I just don't like some of his, deci some of his decisions with the puck uh, when I watched him, Adelius. But uh, I'm fine with him. I'm going to mute David strength. right now. <laughs> Sorry, what? So I'm going to mute David right now. <laughs> I, I'm fine with him being there. I think he has enough skill to be here. I just, yeah, I, I like other players with like Minty Kav ahead of him, and we have him there, so that's fine. And I also like uh, Matthias Havili, uh, defenseman mm. who uh, is, I guess, the size is an issue there, but um, he is he is the best puck moving Swedish defenseman. I think he's. Really smart with the puck. Uh, he doesn't make a lot of mistakes either. And sometimes that frustrates me because I want him to take more risks because I think he has uh, good good puck skills to, to to play a high risk game. But you know, he he plays to the situation, to the percentage, uh, moves the puck well, uh, probably should score more points uh, than he has done in the J20 league. He has he had two points last night, though, but uh, that that's I think if he's going to succeed, he needs to be a strong offensive power play defenseman uh, because he doesn't have the physical tools, but he, he he competes hard. He competes hard along the boards and it's not shying away from uh, any physical contact, even if he's uh, a smaller size defenseman. So these are the Swedes, I guess, uh, who should be in contention here for the bottom spots for, for the first round. I like the, the case for Casper. I thought that was compelling. We could do him at 21. Yeah, I like Casper quite a bit, but the big question is really, does he have enough skill to be on more than like third line center? Because I thought that he played with Pretty much just one pace, and that that might be an issue going forwards. But I did like him quite a bit because the pace. I like Casper better as a winger. Actually, I don't. I watched some of the when he plays internationally for Austria. He played center. I, I didn't think he he was that strong in the, those games. I like when he plays. At wing, as it does in the Swedish hockey league, so I, th I think that will be his future position. So Casper twenty one, Goche twenty two, Odelius twenty. Yeah, that's a good spot. That's a good spot for. Him. You can have Odelius too. We could go Goche Odelius. Um. I Nelson like at 24. Is that sounds Nelson's about spot? right to me. It's at oh. the lower end of Rachel's range as well. So, yeah. Now yeah, let's do it. I said my piece. <laughs> Cam hates it. <laughs> <laughs> now I want Isaac Howard up next. Yeah. Just a spite. <laughs> Just the spider face, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we had Minchukov at like what fifteen, so I feel like <laughs> Nelson should be in there. Just 
compromise. She was we not we like it. A fan of Minchukov. Um, Miro at twenty five. Do we start to reasonable bet on the tools? I don't know if I like Gulshay more than him. Than Miro. I guess Miro is younger. Maybe a bit. Uh, <laughs> I don't really like them both as. I'm not sure they're they're in top 32 guys either, but I have to think about it still. We can have Miro right there. Dylan likes him enough. I also Lassie like, has like him 12 to 17. Do, do we like other players more than him though? Because we we haven't made we haven't said anything positive about his game. Like why should he be in the first round or? It's all round, anchoring yeah, yeah, it's, on the tools, what he's done in the past. Um, JD, this could be a place to kind of beat the drum for Ingram. Yeah, Ingram. Yeah, it, it's it's Ingram's spot. All right. There's enough conviction. It's done. His tape is phenomenal. Um, yeah, he's, he's, he's a smart player. I, I don't. If the skating I picks up, like, holy skating. crap. Yeah. Uh, do you think though that the, like the way he generates offense, like it, it's a lot of like hand, it's hands heavy. Yeah, but I it's varied like. enough. Like he can distribute, he can shoot, and he does yeah. mix it up. Like I, I, I think he has enough tools. Okay, fair enough. Um, he's also really skilled as a handler too. Yeah, no, that's one hundred percent true. Um, Havlid, we have some yeah, some confidence in Havlid. Uh, Le Karamaki, I, I'm not a huge fan, but I can live with it. Um, I like Seminole. Jack, Jack Hughes. I know Jack Rachel likes Ludwig. Forgot about. Here. Yeah, Jack this Hughes. could be a good spot for Jack Hughes. He is we just have, becoming not great, one. but he's pretty good. We have one good. game report on Jack Hughes this season. One, just yeah. a single one. I, I haven't watched him at Northeastern. I saw him a lot last year. I should I'll put in some stuff for last year. And I've got some in the in the coffee here handwritten that I need to get in. I've got a whole bushel of them. He's really uh, exciting. Just, last just year, in general. I, yeah. He he's kind he, of he's become so a defensive center year. at this point this season. Like very uh conservative, very limited, mm-hmm. not trying to do too much. Uh very pensive posture, I would say. Um hard to evaluate. How uh, about uh, Perevalov, Alexander Perevalov from Russia? I mean, Dylan is not here, but I liked him quite at Linka, so. Um, Dylan has yeah. Kovochko ahead of him, though. I asked only... about him. He, he, he didn't think he was a first. Yeah. First runner, the top 32. Lassie, yeah. have you seen those two? He. Dylan wants mm, Kovochko. No, I don't think so. First. Yeah. I mean, I can give an argument for Semenov. Like, I like I like yeah. Semenov a lot here. Uh, he's he can play a bunch of different roles. Some games he's the play driver for Kamloops' top line. Other times he's just the play connector. I mean, he's very deceptive. He usually makes the right decision. Loves to get the puck inside. He can do so in projectable ways. Strong defensively. Great on retrievals. Just a very well-rounded player that you can see scaling his game up real well to the NHL. The skein is the issue. It's not the most dynamic puck handler, not the most dynamic player in general. Um, I think he's, I think the NHL outcome is probably like a, you know, a lower end kind of mid six forward who does a little bit of everything and maybe some special teams in the right situation. Well, I've seen Seminov live like three or four times and like they were like probably some of the better viewings I've had like throughout the entire, all my viewings. Like he's, um, he's slippery along the boards. Um, Forward strides rough, but he has separation. There's linear crossovers. He's a constant scanner. Um, he takes over games, at least from my experience. Uh, off puck, weak side activations, drop off plays per, on premier entries. Um, he's a re- he's really good defensively. Like he he's proactive. Um, like like he's a menace in sustained pressure. Like j- just along the boards and creating. Uh, out of pressure like i i think he's excellent honestly yeah like well and his production like his he can't his production he's on a good team but he's producing and like and like he took over the games i saw live i mean it is prince george they're a young team but 
it is what it is, right? Like, let's do it. Yeah, we got time for seven off here. Yeah, he was. He's been phenomenal. I watched uh, the two Seattle games that they played uh, earlier this week, um, yesterday, and this morning. And uh, yeah, he was. He was phenomenal. Just, uh, just a really impressive player for for pretty much everything that he does. Like, I think there's a real chance that he ends up becoming a top twenty guy uh, by the next meeting. Okay, let's uh, let's I do th- it then. I think Rachel had uh, Paul Ludwinski in this range. Sure. Yeah, I got no problems with that. Uh, very intelligent off putt player, uh, some skill, some inside play, some defense. Uh, very similar, to, sim- very similar uh, profile to Seminov. He just doesn't get to play with two high end players. Um, Havlid at twenty eight. I'm fine with that. Havlid's fun. You know, I got to bring up Matt's Lingren here. <sighs> Upside. The kid's gonna boom. He's gonna pop here in the next couple of years. I see another but, second. But how does he have upside coming though. out of the Blazers? He's an excellent transitional defender. Yeah. Or, but uh, like, like in the offensive moves, zone, does he create many he, plays? He, he doesn't. He doesn't need to at this point too. But he's like a full year younger than half these other defensemen we're talking about too. Like there's there's a there's gonna be a lot of growth in his game. And so I I, I know I'm a bit of, on an island here. I thought that uh, Daniel was actually gonna be my main counterattack but it turns out he likes him a little bit so it's gonna be mitch probably um <laughs> i just i i see some of the gap issues defensively on rush you know when his rush defense i see the lack of like elite handles you know he doesn't he the doesn't skating. move at the top of the arc as well i think the skating's actually not bad and if you Oops. add a little strength to his lower half that that's going to improve too so with me i'm projecting right i'm projecting onto this kid what i think can come in the next few years versus the product we're seeing right now i'm i'm judging him as borderline as a d minus one right now and going back and looking at his d minus one take he's already taken some nice strides so like i got no problem if we don't end up squeaking him into the top 32 but i had to put in a little push here at the end of the first round to see if we can't get him in i watched two of his games uh again because i watched Seminoff, and he looked way better in the offensive zone in them uh, he had some pretty dynamic shifts, but the hands, it's not just that he doesn't have elite hands. Uh, his hands are, are a problem. His top hand is completely locked to his hip. He has no range of motion. He has difficulty handling pucks inside of movement. Uh, you see him deke and like try to bring the puck, but his weight is always centered when he moves again, because that top hand stays on his, on his side. And so it's very difficult for him to access certain passing lines. So, like he does have good ideas, but when he takes the puck, he pulls it and then he throws it. And then by the time he's passed it, the lane has already closed because he has to do that extra motion, move the puck to load up the pass. Um, but yeah, he's, he's an interesting player. Like the passing mind is phenomenal. It's just the tools have to really, really catch up. And it's not, for me, it's not a strength thing at all. Like strength isn't going to fix the way that he handles. It's not going to fix his inside edges. It's not going to fix uh a variety of different things. It will help him on retrievals though, which is one area where he just gets bodied sometimes, even though he does everything right. Like yeah. I came in, I came in with those two games, like curious to see if he could develop and add more things. And yeah, like I think there's a very strong case for him being at the end of the sport at the end of this top 32. Now, like I moved him up from the yeah. eighth best guy in the WHL to the uh, sixth under Seminoff. Yeah. I, I agree I, with like I, the I, manipulations and like how, how he tries it, but it's like, it takes too long essentially. And then, yeah. um, you know, he does skate with like his shoulders, like his upper body so stiff when he skates, but he's, he is always in motion. Right. Uh, and I agree with what Cam said about like the, I watched a bunch of his games, uh, from the hub and, um, there is, there is a noticeable change. I feel, um, uh, there is an improvement there, but, um, yeah, like he's just a very over, overactive feat in transitional defending situations. Uh, and again, yeah fall apart sometimes but immature in that regard but he's also like i love the level of difficulty in the passes that he attempts to like they don't always work but i love that he's trying them he's trying to manipulate and move through a fold he's trying to you know outweigh pressure and and draw that that pressure in before moving it and yeah he's missing the mark sometimes but i think with that repetition is that you want to see these kids attempt those those high danger high creativity plays that makes sense to me do we do it then do we drop Lindgren at 29. Well, there's there's Korczynski as well. I, I don't have a ton of viewings on him, but like his he's just volatile in every way. Um, just from like a, a low viewing kind of perspective, it, it it feels like he's he might be better than Lindgren if he puts everything together. The strides really whack, but 
He's yeah, just so like is fun Lindgren, to watch. So. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, it, oh, we just wait till you see no. Korczynski, man. <laughs> His is way worse. It's worse? Like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pardon me. Yeah, yeah he, he heel kicks. He heel kicks off of like one foot. He he lunges sometimes. Like his stride length just randomly just gets huge. Like he, he bobs his upper body. Um, he mirrors footwork, but like it's a, an adventure every time. Um, I think he's like one of the top like defenders in the WHL in terms of just skill, but like, yeah. he's just like, he's, uh, he's such a hard projection. I need to watch him more. I've watched Lindgren like way more. I've watched him like 12 times just to make Love some to sense hear what of the Jimmy. volatility of Korchinski is. So I tracked a game the other day. He had 10 exit attempts under pressure. Nine of them failed. Not even, not just <laughs> didn't clear Not, not just didn't clear the zone, but landed straight on the stick of another pl- of the opposition in his own zone. The one that he connected was a one touch three line saucer pass through four defenders for a breakaway. <laughs> like, come That's on. Fun. How do you do this? That's I'd fun. love to hear what Jimmy had to say about Ludwig Pearson as well in this mm. range. Not a big fan there. Uh, mm. I don't think he's had a good season. I th- he was really talented uh, as a young kid, as a U16, U17 player, but uh, he's a great skater. It's kind of uh, creative, but it, uh, I, I think he's more like a second, third round pick. Uh, I don't see a huge upside there. Uh, he, he has the skating and, and the hands, but mm-hmm. uh, no, not much else. He's, he's kind of the same player he was last year. He, it hasn't happened much with him this season. Don't love that from an 03 either. The the viewings I had in the SHL, he looked good. He just looked good in that role, right? Where he was just yeah. it was a very north south game, straight up. Not a, he wasn't even really using his hands much. But that often is the case when these eighteen year olds are playing in the SHL. Yeah. I just watched a game of his and like I thought his stride mechanics were awesome, but his pace is just like so inconsistent. And then like like he has like inside oriented handling. Uh, but he has spacing issues as well. Like he runs into teammates and everything. And um, yeah. uh, I don't think his shot is very projection uh, uh, projectable. And like, I, I do think he supports well and he has some like manipulation through his eyes. Uh, but like, you know, he, he's really passive in the defensive zone as well. Um, I don't know. Like uh, I need to watch him more, but very, very weird player. I would say like, there are two players on the queue that are in this range, general range too, but... And you love Luno, him. right? I do like him. It's just that he's been really disappointing this year. I thought I would see more grow out of him. He's he's very good in terms of skating habits, so taking every puck and movement, dancing from edge to edge all the time, uh, attracting a forecheck, beating with passes, but he's just running through scripts, so it's just like things you learn in training that he does on the ice, but there's no adaptation to the game. He's just... He's running through his skill and what he can do. And there, I would like to see him uh, create more, hold the puck more, and create more and be better defensively. He has some defensive, defensive habits. He can angle the play, and he's pretty good about his rush defense because he backtracks early. But he has some of the same problems that Jeremy Poirier had in his draft year. His, his, he's very agile, but his skating and his skating speed and quickness are problems. So, I'm not comfortable raking him in the top 32 right now, but he, he came back from an injury, I think, and his play might improve during the year. And Nathan Gaucher is not scoring, and he's a, he's an O3 playing on a strong team. So maybe he doesn't get to play with the top players, but he should be driving his line a lot more. He just has passing skills and an inside game and above average skating. So he's probably going to become a checker who can connect some plays and goes to the net. Uh, this is still interesting in this draft, but if you have other players that you believe in more, maybe they should go in the top 32 ahead of him. All right. Well, let's put Matt Lingren down um, at 29 uh, because that's the only only real good case. But we still have to figure out Mirosh and Chenko. We still have to figure out uh, McConnell Barker because I Rachel like, has him 15 to 23. We, we got to like put Goyette Miro in this down. range too. I got. Uh, sorry, Go I like David Goyette in this range too. Whether at the end or maybe if he we re- revisit him for the next meeting. 
Yeah, he's an extreme, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. he's elite, all passing. <laughs> elite level passing and vision, and that's about it. <laughs> but yeah. that's it's hard to ignore sometimes with the things that he does in the ice. Some of them are insane. Yeah, uh, it's a tricky one. Do you do you like? Are there any? What are your thoughts on McConnell Barker now? Because you have him number two. I think just because you know, the skating is really the only issue, but it's a big issue. I think yeah. upside wise, if that improves, he could be, you know, a number one center in the NHL or, but I think it's a long road for him to get there at this point. Um, I'm not exactly sure if how much the, you know, not having played last season is hurting a lot of players right now in the OHL. So it's, it's really difficult to determine projection for a lot of them. And I think that that would be the only reason I'm hesitant with McConnell Barker. If Rachel feels really strongly about him, I think we need to have him in the top 32. Um, I don't know. I just, I think it's, uh, it's, it's really hard to say right now because when, you know, he's, he, it, he, it keeps him behind the play. He's, kind of late to areas in the ice where he could be making more of an offensive impact. Um, but you could say that for so many other players, like Hunter Hayde is the same way. D- Danny Jilkin sometimes, uh, Pano Femis, Aiden Castle, all the guys that we thought were going to be A's this, sh- or at least in this meeting are really struggling with pace and timing right now. Yeah. And is there, is there another, uh, is there another, so Miro at 30, is everyone okay with Miro at 30? Roshchenko 30. Yeah. Get him down. Okay. Is there is there an argument for Isaac Howard that isn't just me ripping him to shreds? We never got Jack oh. Hughes on there either. My I only really concern with the Jack Hughes thing is that we don't have anything in the database, have. right? And yeah. so we have like zero reports or one. Yeah, I got how, a couple. How does one yeah. watch Northeastern games? What's the platform? Is it on uh, Iceberg CBS or, or not Iceberg? Sorry, <laughs> instead uh, CBS Sports. Or on hockey. Okay. TV. On hockey. You, you can go. Not that I would use an illegal stream. <laughs> no. I think you can. Uh, uh, I think you beneath can, me. If you go to, I watched a bunch of uh, a bunch of games on their website. They have a portal. Portal. And it's like a okay. it's like a dollar it's a dollar per game or whatever. I okay. I I cut like all this Madden and McDonough tape a couple of years ago, and it was just like gotcha. a dollar a game basically. And it's there. It streams it. They have a vods too. So. I mean, in, Instat has has tape yeah. on him too, right? Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the well, Swedes. well, what would you say for Hughes then, then uh, Cam? Because you you seem to have I, more viewings than I have. Yeah, I know that um, early on there, like I I expected that like maybe he was going to be able to be like a real impact playmaker, but again, draft eligible playing in the NCAA, playing down the lineup a little bit, it it has been a pretty straight up. He's been trying to be on the right side of the puck. I do see that play creation that he has to his game. He's just one of these interesting kind of. He does have some flash, um, and he's smart enough to play at this level at eighteen um, and not not get buried. Um, I think we're going to see his numbers elevate substantially next year. Um, he's he's a he's kind of that A minus B level guy for me. That if he goes thirty, if he goes forty, it's not the end of the world. But just he's he's right around there. I'd like to see more. I wish he was. I wish he was good playing at a lower level so we could really see where his game could take off to it. That's at this point. And you know, thinking about a kid like Mirashnichenko is the same thing, right? Like, what would he be doing in the OHL? Would we have a higher um, thought on him if he was playing in a league that allowed a little more creativity or, or some more opportunities for him offensively? But um, yeah, with Hughes, I think that he's. He's in this range, so I thought that we should uh, at least have the conversation about him, even if we don't have enough reports in the database. I'm watching. I'd say right. if you don't feel strongly about him, like if we could get Howard in. Yeah, I'm not hammering the class. table for him. I just think the skill with Howard, and I and I've seen like I've seen a lot of him, and like it's inconsistent, and I'll give you that. And like, I watched some of the games that like I saw Mitch put reports, and then he's right. Like sometimes he's it's just beating his head against the wall, and there's like no intelligence whatsoever he's trying to do it all himself like and it's just low quality chances the entire night and he's just pretty much he's playing on the other team but like when he puts it together it's just so impressive and like with with like the with the skating ability that he has and the tempo that he plays at I just think like there's a chance for translatability there that there may not be with some of these some of these other guys that we're putting in this discussion um I just think like the skill level so high and like 
when it clicks for him and when he's smart and when he's deceptive and when he uses skating to his advantage, like he's, he's a top 15 guy. I watched a lot of him, like six or seven games and I haven't seen that. I, I, I think we shouldn't put him in this top 32, but he could be in a further one. If we if catch the same things you, you're saying, because I haven't seen it all. Who else are we going to put in? Lakari Maki? B&B. Uh, I, I, I mm-hmm. think we should put him in. Even if we dropped him in lighter viewings. I'm watching him right now, and his skating doesn't look all that bad. Like I'll send you like some this. clips. It's McConnell Barker. Oh. BMB? He has I don't good know. I don't moments. Even know really his name. <laughs> he has moments, yes. He has he does moments. Have moments. Just the, I, lately, they've been so a lot few of and far between. They've been like, so limited. Well, we have just... two prospects left that like our regionals uh, have for this range, and it's BMB and Ilya Kovochko. Jimmy, what that. about Suzdalev, too? Uh, I think if, if we're supposed to have one more Swede, it's Lekker Mackey for me, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah but I it's not a hill I'm willing to die on if, if he gets outside, too. He's, uh, he has his holes in his game. Uh, so Staliev, I think we we should watch him during the season. I think he he can be a riser, but I'm I'm, I'm questioning the the competitiveness there because he's so inconsistent. When when his game is on, he's he looks like a first rounder with uh, great vision. You know, he he uh, can create space and great shot, uh, great skating, but sometimes it's just off. So uh, I I don't think we should have him in the first round right now i also think uh karchinski honorable mention maybe thornton honorable mention um i don't know if they're wayne hudson honorable mention but i (laughs) i won't get into that with david today or mitch i guess or no mitch mitch you are a lane hudson fan Uh, yes and 30 70 (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah, at 70. I forgot about that. Yeah. Honestly, the most compelling case so far has been Joey's argument for Isaac Howard. <laughs> I, I really like, I just think, I just think if he puts it together and he like, he manages to figure out how, like, how to play more effectively, like the skill is just, I think it's going to make us look stupid. Like having him in like the late, uh, mid to late second round. I, I don't mind that. <laughs> I'm willing to bet on if you really want him. I, I, don't, I don't care that too much, but I think we should also respect the work. You know, both of our OHL scouts who have BMB. That's that's fair. Like, I, I wouldn't be like heartbroken or anything if we didn't have BMB on this list, but I think Rachel's really high on him. And I don't know. I don't know if it's something that I don't know. We put him in the top 32 because you know, she sees something in him that maybe some of us are missing. He's 31 now. I, I have decided because I am extremely hungry and I'm making those <laughs> daughters. So it is, I need to get started now. So can we put Howard at 32? I want to respect everybody's work, but I also will say like I had him ahead of Gauthier and Ingram. And I, I've seen, I've seen him a lot. I just Has think, anyone I don't know. seen him besides me? Mitch and Joey, Cam, have you seen him? Yeah, I've seen him, and he frustrates me a lot. But I do see, I do see the potential there too. I see what right? Joey's right, going That's enough. Too. There we go. Perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think he's. I think he's going to be here. Yeah. Tostadas yeah, and smoking. Yeah, the voices. Tostadas have to turn. <laughs> we'll discuss him more next time. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll keep we an go. eye on him, and if he deserves to drop, like fair is fair. But this from is what I've not, seen not November. Seems... Like this is not our final board at all. Right. No, we'll yeah. just scrub all history of it from our website. Like other <laughs> we'll delete his EP profile too. Just... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks so much, we everyone. Uh, tostadas are waiting. Um, <laughs> hockey is waiting. Um, yes. Everybody have a great weekend and can't wait to post this on Rinkside. <laughs>